Hello, hello. Welcome, everyone, to another Creatures in Corridors live stream. Or if you're watching us on YouTube, uh, welcome to another video. We are playing some Strixhaven today. This is Magical College in the uh, Magic the Gathering universe. Mm -hmm. And we are just having some good old slice of life shenanigans, going to class, trying to be the popular kids, or at least not get bullied by the popular kids. Um, we, uh, so far, uh, this is still the first week of classes. So, uh, our, our players here still kind of getting to know everyone, getting to learn their way around the campuses and, uh, see what kind of adventures we can get into. So, uh, last week we, uh, we did the first two classes, day one, first day of class, always exciting at school. And, uh, today we're going to... Try to get through a couple more. Hopefully, the end till the end of the week. We'll see. But uh, we're in no rush. You know, this is just very chill, kind of laid back, and uh, yeah, let's get right into it. So, I believe we ended on you guys going to bed for the evening, the end of your first day of class. It was a big day, Monday, and now you are awakening Tuesday morning. Uh, do you guys want to meet up in the cafeteria, or do you just want to head straight to class? I wake up stretching like, ah, oh, man, that was a good night's rest, and then I remember the events of last night and start crying. You look down at the magical stain on your floor that seems to not want to come out, no matter how much you <laughs> press the digitation it, and lament that you didn't take it to the science lab and tried to do uh, an experiment in your room. Like I hope they don't make me pay for this. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna buy like a small carpet the next time I find one and just cover it so it's not seen, so I can hide my shame. And then yeah, I'll, I'll uh, prepare myself to go get breakfast. Destiny takes her time. It takes her a little while to go and get breakfast, but she eventually arrives. I'm uh, the first person at breakfast. I'm sitting there with, I'm already sitting down with like a, um, a tray of just um, a couple sausage biscuits, a little bit of bacon and eggs. Uh, hello, I, Kaylin. I, uh, uh, good morning. I'm sorry, it's been a while. Can you pronounce your name again? Elix, right? Elix, yes. yes okay. Uh, uh, good morning, Elix. Um, and then I take a biscuit off his plate and start uh, eating it. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, um, hey, so, guys. Uh, oh, uh, Destiny. You sound You look tired. exhausted. Yeah. Yep. Do any of us uh, have the same classes today? Uh, I'm not sure. Let me check the schedule that I conveniently keep on me. Um... Dang, I left my schedule in my dorm. <laughs> well, I have uh, expressive casting for beginners today. Nope, not me. I've got beginner oh. arcano botany today. Uh, uh, and it looks like I've got computational magic 101. Oh, I'm kind of excited for this one. I feel like this will be a bit easier than evocation. Yeah, I'm very excited for today's lesson. I think this is going to be my favorite class uh, this year. Hopefully mine uh, wakes me up. Oh, the sausage looks great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, that's... <clears throat> never mind. <laughs> Speaking of sausage, has anybody seen Rampart? Uh, Rampart, Rampart is mysteriously... Segue. Rampart is mysteriously missing this morning. Well, I hope he's okay. Oh. Perhaps he's just uh, tired, or maybe he just wanted to get a head start on whatever class he has. I don't know. Isn't he usually one of the early risers? I think it's usually me and him. What's it? Um, I don't know. I don't I'm know. in the girls' dorm. <laughs> I don't see anyone. I, I, we've we've only had one, two nights rest here. I don't think we really have a pattern of early risers yet. Should um, we? Should we try to go find him? 
Shouldn't be fun. Well, no. No? No, he's just, uh, I mean, as long as he shows up to class, I'm sure it'll be fine. Yeah, I don't, I don't see him as someone that's going to be missing classes. It should be right. fine. I, I think I'm going to go head over to mine. I mean, perhaps if, uh, perhaps if we don't, if we don't run into him again, in like, in like by the end of the day or so, maybe, I don't know, but you know, he does, we all just met. He doesn't really particularly owe us that much time of his time. That's fair. I guess, uh, maybe we'll see him at lunch. Uh, we all in agreement of meeting up here at lunch again, like, uh, like yesterday. Yeah. Let's do that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Sure. Why not? What's the worst? Yeah, of course. Let's, uh, finish eating. Uh, did you, okay, did you ever look at the, uh, the ooze from the Mimic? I, I think look, Lampart, Rampart brought that up. I look super dejected. Uh, I don't want to talk about it. Uh, is it that bad? I, uh, I forgot to wash my hands before getting started. And I don't, like, my hands were kind of slippery and the vial that I had stored it in fell out of my hands and onto the floor and when I tried to um, save any of it at all I kind of made it worse and uh, smeared it all into the floor and uh, it left a huge stain and I can't get it out even with as much prestidigitation as I could cast oh well so I guess that's something. It's immune to the prestidigitation spell. <laughs> I uh, I'm just going to assume that's for the better because following the mimic is probably dangerous, and that's uh, huh, not really what uh, uh, we're here to do, right? We're not here to adventure and go off on crazy journeys. Um, perhaps it's for the better. Jokes that's on all, you. That's, that's all I'm, I'm saying. Taking all this college oh, to adventure, well, maybe not quite to adventure, but uh, definitely to travel. Like, uh, oh, well, that's uh, good for you. Oh, that's certainly not what I'm here to do. Um, but like, like I said, uh, I was saved as a kid, and I want to, you know, pay it forward. I want to do the same. I want to go around and help people for a while. Uh, yeah. Uh, for sure. That's a, a noble aspiration. Oh, ah, class is about to start. I oh, should uh, right. head off. Yep. I scarfed down the last bit of my, my breakfast. <laughs> so, with the, uh, the day of classes ahead of you and a full belly full of breakfast, you guys scamper off to your morning classes, or your, uh, your classes for today, rather. Um, classes basically are a full day affair here. Um, so, first up, we've got Destiny. Destiny. Expressive casting. So, you head back, Destiny, you head back to the Prismari campus. Uh, this one, uh, takes place indoors. It'll be in the, uh, that large central spire that you saw, uh, whenever you made your trek out here last time. And it is called Conjurat Hall. Very nice. And when you go inside, the interior is like, from the outside, it looks like it's solid. But on the inside, you realize that the, almost the entire structure is made of this stained glass that allows you to like, kind of see out into the rest of the campus it's got kind of this translucent effect letting the light in it's absolutely beautiful and breathtaking when you first walk in expected here <laughs> and so you make your way to your classroom and your teacher notes here Oh, 
here we go. Sorry. <laughs> I was just like, where is the page I'm looking for? Okay, so uh, you you enter into um, the classroom and it looks, um, it's a bit like a music hall. So it's got kind of the curved shape with to like accentuate the acoustics. Excuse me. And down at the front, you see, um, you see a teacher. Actually, let's jump over to this page. You see your teacher who's got this uh, hair that looks like he just stuck his finger in an electric socket. Oh, we can't see his, anything. yeah, no, I'm working on it. Okay. That guy. She's here. Is that Samuel L. Jackson? Maybe. <laughs> um, and you've also got these two. This one. So, uh, so down at the down at the front of the class, you uh, this yeah this guy who looks like his he stuck his finger in an electric socket. His hair is just. Like, completely like full static x style just like completely standing on end and uh everyone's kind of taking their places getting their their books and papers and stuff out um class hasn't started just yet i see my favorite persons here <laughs> i'm going over to Xanther. he uh he's like He's like getting his uh, his notes and stuff out, getting his his uh, scrolls and quills and whatnot. He he doesn't seem to have noticed you walk up. Looks like we're gonna have a lot of classes together. And he whips his head around. And he's like, "Well, well, well, look who it is. Are you are you starting to stalk me or something?" Oh no, <laughs> I wouldn't do that. Deception? No, I was kidding. <laughs> I was kidding. Uh, he's like, um, well, uh, glad to have you around. Do you want to sit next to me? So, See. do you want to join Prismari? I think so. That really seems like it's up my uh, up my creek, so to speak. Me too. I um I love I love fire and I love passion and uh you know this place it really just speaks to me. There's uh there's something so inspiring about the creativity that you just you just don't see in the other campuses. I agree with that. Is there anything you want to do? Well, that's the part that uh, I'm still kind of figuring out. And you can see he looks uh, he looks kind of a bit like like that's kind of a bit of a touchy subject. He kind of looks down and like he's not super confident. Like he's been up until this point, he's been like super confident. But like that question seemed to have kind of struck a nerve a little bit. Well, I'm sure you'll figure it out. Um, what about you? Are you uh, you're you're going to be a Prismari as well? Yes, I'm very into uh, pyrotechnics and stuff like that. Making, doing magic with fire and making it pretty instead of harming people. Oh, you make fireworks. Okay, okay. Well, uh, I'd love to. I'd love to watch your fireworks sometime. Oh, you will. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and about that time, the instructor. Uh, he, uh, oh, there y'all keep me from the soundboard. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so uh, the, about that time, the instructor, he uh, he taps his wand on the desk and he's like, all right, students, settle in. Today we'll be going over expressive casting. And for the first lesson, we're going to be doing a little bit of a workshop. Uh, you're going to make a basic sculpture using fire. Ooh. Now, now you, uh, your sculpture can be, uh, whatever you would like, uh, as long as it is made of pure flames. And, uh, 
You're you're welcome to use a guide if you need some kind of uh, what's the word framework or something. But uh, you have until the end of the class, and uh, after giving a very brief amount of instruction, he uh, he he sets you guys to work and kind of like settles into his notes and starts like reading over something. So, uh, Destiny, if you want to, whenever you're ready, you can give me a performance check. Yes. Oh, you know she's going to roll well. Oh. <laughs> oh. I did it. <laughs> she gets that random event because that was a nat 20, right? <laughs> um so destiny you begin to uh call upon your fiery passion and sitting next to xander uh for, for anyone who missed last week uh, xander is this uh fire ganasi guy up at the top here and uh you uh you unleash this torrent of flames and uh what what is your sculpture of <laughs> I mean, I think I know, but I have to ask. <laughs> I'm not going to try to make it too obvious, but it is to two people <laughs> with no discerning. Uh, it's more abstract. And uh... <laughs> okay, so you make this fire sculpture and it's like this elaborate display of two. Uh, it's actually like a moving sculpture instead of like a static sculpture because fire is alive and moves. It's actually like. Uh, a man and a woman like dancing with one another in like in the in there's like this whole like fiery uh like tornado or like uh like helix around them and in the center it's this it's this couple that are doing like some ballroom dancing or whatever and uh <laughs> um <laughs> Xander next to you is like trying to He's like trying to make a sculpture and he makes like a little, uh, basically the equivalent of like uh, a stick figure. <laughs> Just like a little like. <laughs> but respect and, uh, on those stick figures. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> art is art, okay? We don't judge here. Uh, <laughs> and um, and uh, he, he looks over at yours and he's like, oh my goodness. Are, are you sure you're first year? Yeah, I just started here. <laughs> you, uh, when you look over at Xander, uh, he hasn't, he hasn't noticed, but you notice that he has set the edge of his, the cuff of his robe, and it is on fire. I cast present digitation to snuff it out. You, uh, he sees you casting a spell at him, and his, his eyes kind of go wide for a second, but then it... <laughs> Like uh, the smoke puffs and uh, a little bit of like steam kind of trickles off the edge of his robe. And he's like, oh, uh, oh, uh, I didn't I realize that uh, I was uh, burning for you, child. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't I didn't want to startle you and say you're on fire. I figured I would just, uh, you know, take it out. Well, I appreciate it. That was very kind of you. And. My, that sculpture of yours is truly magnificent. Uh, what, what was your inspiration? Just the feelings I was having. Uh, from uh, from the row behind you, uh, Quintilius and Rubina are uh, th these two are up there. And whenever you say that, you hear Quintilius go, "Boo!" <laughs> <laughs> you want to join in? <laughs> Oh, no, no. You two have your fun. Just please <laughs> remind me if uh, if I need to bring a, uh, a sick bag next time. <laughs> oh, don't worry, I'll bring it for you. <laughs> and Rubina's like, Quint, leave her alone. They're in, they're having a thing. They're having a moment. And he's like, mm hmm. And Xander, uh, Xander's kind of like blushing a little bit. And he's just like, uh, uh, pay them no attention. Uh, you, you did great, Destiny. Thank you. 
Don't worry, it takes a lot to get on my nerves. Stuff like that doesn't <laughs> phase me. <laughs> so uh, you uh, you take the the rest of the class to uh, since you uh, you finished pretty early. You uh, you kind of spend the rest of the time helping Xander to make his sculpture a little bit more nothing too crazy but uh you kind of get him from like a stick figure to like a a rough cartoon like rudimentary uh sculpture it's a, it's a little better but uh nothing too exceptional yay and uh that is going to net you another relationship point with xander <laughs> yes all right. So that is expressive casting. We're going to jump over to, I think it was Arcano Botany next. Yep. Yep. Sure. Um, just reference my notes here. These people. Got them. <laughs> so they're spaced a bit awkwardly, but those are the two. And, uh, okay, so uh, oh, this I think this is the first time we've been to Witherbloom. I or no? Did you? Last week. You went to Witherbloom last. Yeah, we okay. had the reanimation, so, the introduction to reanimation. Yeah. Well, we'll walk through again just for fun. Uh, so you. Uh, Alcalin, you make your way down to Witherbloom into the into the swamp, and uh, when you get down there, the the swamp gas just fills your heart with uh, delight yes. at the uh, the sights and smells of the uh, the murky swamp. Is just uh, you just feel right at home here. I do change that scent from mint to lavender again to help ward off the pests. Mosquitos. Yeah, <laughs> there's like a cloud of mosquitoes and like almost as if you have like a force field. It just fucking around you. <laughs> it just completely avoid you entirely. Hell yeah. You see another you see another first year like eh, trying to like chase the bugs away. I can have three instances of it up, so I will cast it on him too so he can have some uh, reprieve. He turns around yeah. and he's just like... He, he turns around and then he looks at his wand and then he looks at the mosquitoes and he looks at his wand. <laughs> <laughs> I just go on my way like it was nothing. Just keep going. Yep. <laughs> uh, so you make it into Wittershins Hall and um, the uh, this one is uh, also in the, the lab. So same, uh, same area that you were in before. Uh, but this time, instead of the gloomy vampire uh your teacher is a chipper looking uh dryad woman with green hair and like flowers and uh, sorry green skin and like flowers instead of hair nice or leaves i don't you, you know what i'm trying to say she's got like vines and leaves and shit instead of hair um so uh, <laughs> so you enter in and she's like, good morning, students, come on in. She's definitely a morning person. Yes. I'm very excited and I take a seat in the front of the class. <laughs> well, 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 today is our canobotany. And if you are in the right class, then you better be excited because today we are going to be sprouting vines. And if you've never sprouted a vine before, it's uh, essential wither bloom life magic. So uh, go ahead and take out your wands and your notebooks and let's begin. And uh, does it, does it, instead of a wand. <laughs> does it even bother taking roll? Psh, forget that. Um, <laughs> she's just so excited. You can tell the, the, the professor is like as excited as you are, if not maybe even more excited for this class. Yes. She's just she like has a true passion for this uh, for the subject, and um, this is gonna be a good uh, class. Yeah. So uh, go ahead and roll. Uh, I think this one is gonna be a nature check. 
technically I could cast a spell, uh, and I will guidance myself. So, uh, so, uh, you see, oh, um, yeah, you, you don't, uh, you don't recognize anyone in this class. Sorry, I forgot to describe like the students and stuff. You don't really recognize anyone in this class. Um, you actually see a couple of kids that look like they might be, um, like second years, like some like remedial students that maybe didn't pass their first time through. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it's actually um, pretty sparse in here. There's actually, it's not like, not nearly as full as your other class was. Uh, but you do also see um, this treant guy that was in your orientation. So you do, you do remember him. Uh, but he sits com opposite of you. He sat completely in the back of the classroom. Oh, I was looking at the wrong person for the teacher then. Whoops. Yeah, the teacher is this one down at the bottom here. Okay. This is the this is another first year student, Melthorn. Oh, okay. And um So anyways, uh so you uh you take out your alchemy supplies and you've got like your little plant thing in front of you and you uh you start uh pouring a little bit of your various potions and lotions and things on it and uh you know just a drop at a time trying to uh not overdo it but uh you you see the the vine begin to kind of come alive and uh it uh it grows like a little a little mouth and a little face like a piranha plant uh nice. <laughs> green stalk with like the red uh, the red bulb at the front and uh it's got like a big toothy grin and it uh it looks up at you and attempts to take a bite out of your hand I guess my AC is technically 14 cuz why would I have my shield out <laughs> and it looks like why would you have your why shield out? You, why would you bring a shield to school? <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I actually hit you. Yes, you did. Are you, are you wearing armor to class? Maybe. Under my uniform. <laughs> <laughs> you never know when you're going to need to scrap. Look what happened on our first day of class. <laughs> uh, our first it's going to be a so uh you not realizing uh the power of this creature that you've created uh oh did it show that whoops oh, well. um yeah, you're gonna <laughs> okay you're gonna take uh six points of piercing damage ouch i think it bit off my finger it uh yeah it uh, it bites and uh, you manage to shake it off before it gets a chance to clamp onto you, but uh, that shit hurt. That shit hurted. That hurted. I'm like, ouch, motherfucker. And then... Are you, you going to do anything about it? Uh... Or can I bite you again? I'm going to fucking... <laughs> Yeet! <laughs> launch that bitch. Are you going to try to throw it? Yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so you uh, you pick up you pick it up from the pot that it's planted in and just huck it at the wall, and uh, <laughs> it, sh it shatters. The pot shatters. The soil goes all over the floor. Everybody looks over at you, including the teacher, and she's just like, "Oh my gosh, um, that is uh, an interesting way to." conclude your project um five points away from high rollers you gotta you gotta be a little more respectful of my classroom than that you can't just be throwing stuff it bit me and i cast <sighs> i like i i'm showing that i'm like bleeding and i cure wounds myself she's like well next time uh if you have to deal with something um you know try uh try to keep it on your desk if you can uh, yes, Teach. Sorry about that. 
some of the uh, the second years kind of like snicker a little bit like <laughs> freshman <laughs> was not expecting it to uh come out and attack me like that uh was a very pretty plant though <laughs> she's like all nature is beautiful but uh you got to remember that it's deadly okay and you got to be ready for whenever it decides to turn on you you're absolutely right. And, uh, Melthorn, the uh, treant guy, he walks over to where you threw the plant, and he starts like sweeping up the shards of pottery and and dirt and shit into like a little dustpan. What happened to the little plant thing? Did it like just wither and die as soon as it got thrown against yeah. the wall? Yeah, yeah, you kill, yeah, you killed it with throwing it. Yeah, okay. She's like, okay then, students, that's going to conclude it for today's lesson. I will see you again Friday for Magical Physiologies. Last dismissed. Yeah. And so, that will bring us to our next class, which is Mr. Alex. Mr. Gaffer, sorry. You actually have a last name. This is computational magic, right? So, Just make sure I have the right professor here. Oh, she looks cool. Okay, so, Alex, oh wait, hold on, we haven't been to, we definitely haven't been to Quandrix yet, so let's, uh, let's take a walk through there first. Okay, so, Alex, am I saying that right? Is it Alex or Elix? Elix. Elix, I'm so sorry. I always want to say Alex. Okay, Elix, excuse me. So Elix, you make your way down to Quandrix campus and there is just something super satisfying about the geometric like layout. This entire place seems like, like all the topiary, all the roads, everything is like perfect angles, like either perfect, like 90 or 45 degree angles. Like the, the like oddly satisfying, like subreddit just personified here. Um, and the, uh, the main hall is, uh, it's like, as you can see from the picture here, there's like this huge, like ravine, like this massive drop off, um, and very thin, very thin walkways, which is a little precarious, but, uh, it, uh, it does look very cool from like an architectural standpoint. Um, and as you're uh, as you're walking to class, you you can see, um, you know, there's like the little campus automaton guys, uh, some of the campus guides, and uh, they they have like basically most of the staff that isn't uh, humanoids are these like constructs that take care of the campus, and uh, you see you know some of them watering the the grass or like trimming the trimming the hedges and whatnot. Um, you also see uh, some uh, some various wildlife. There, uh, there's some some birds and uh, magical creatures that are uh, kind of kind of on the edge of edge of the uh, this area of the campus. Uh, it does it does kind of back up to the forest that is on the other side of Witherbloom. Uh, so you do see like there's some nature and wildlife stuff going on out there too. But uh, your class is in this main hall, which is the Taurus Hall. 
the Hall of Justice. No, great. Oh my gosh. Sorry, I was just reading some of this description. Crazy. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, uh, so this, this hall seems to be like... Um, it's uh it's moving ever so slightly and uh it it does like kind of this it has kind of this almost like optical illusion effect that makes it like uh look it's it's a bit like looking through a kaleidoscope where like the shape of the the building seems to be change with every passing rotation it seems to be changing slightly Impressive fixture. Uh, how do I get in? <laughs> uh, yeah, finding you can't. You actually you, you look around and you're you're struggling to find where the door is. Go ahead and make a uh, either investigation or perception check. Uh, Ooh, nice. Man, digital dice are really satisfying. Watching it roll over from that yes, 5 are. to the 18. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. The whole <sighs> reason I do it, because it's so... It gives you that, that adrenaline. <laughs> so uh, you're studying this thing, and it's uh, to, to a lesser trained mind, it would probably put you into some kind of a, like, almost trance-like uh, like it's kind of bewildering to watch. It, it might even, you know, crumble a uh, a, a non magical user's mind. But uh, after studying it and kind of taking a very practical, like grid based approach, you're like, well, obviously it's going to be somewhere I can reach. And then you know, if I don't look higher than this, and then we cut this off, and you kind of take a very like methodical process to determining it and. Uh, Give it a little patience and a little practice. The door finally reveals itself. It's this uh, diamond-shaped door, and it's like doing like a... a you have to kind of catch it at just the right time to get in. Like, just as you can see, like, there's like an interior section, and it aligns at just the right moment for you to uh, slip inside. Um, so you do, you do successfully make it in. That was stressful. <laughs> All right. Now to my classroom, I suppose. Um, I the look interior around for is anybody. Like an, the interior is like an M.C. Escher painting. There's like stairs going up the side, and like <laughs> it's uh, it's a bit mystifying. But uh, you do uh, you do spot one of your classmates going into a classroom. Um. Switch over here now. Uh, so you see, you see this uh, this girl with the uh, the green pigtails here. You see her walking to a class, and you remembered uh, that she was in this class with you. So you jump on in. Uh, 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 she's a first year, I believe. So perhaps that's the, perhaps that's the right way to go. I head toward that classroom, looking for any signs that tells me that this is the right room. And uh, he peek my head in. Uh, this is computational magic, right? Sorry, so I'm the, a bit lost. So the the teacher, there's like a giant, um, like ephemeral, like in, instead of like a uh, a normal like whiteboard or blackboard or whatever, uh, there's like this ephemeral rectangle. And uh, the teacher is using her wand to write like equations and shit on the uh, on this on this uh, display. And she, uh, without turning around, she's like, "Yes, come on in." Thank you, Professor. Now I make my way to the back of the classroom. <laughs> uh, you shuffle in, and uh, this uh, this pigtailed girl is also at the back of the classroom as well. And you, uh, 
you know, leaving two or three seats between you, uh, you sit down and, and take your place and take out your your notes and or your uh, your quills and papers and whatnot. Uh, and when the teacher turns around, uh, you are pretty shocked that she looks like she's young enough that she could have easily been one of the students. And for a moment, you thought she was, but uh, she uh, takes her place at the podium and uh, begins to address the class. And she's like. Uh, good morning, students. This is Computational Magic 101, where uh, we learn about the magic and wonder of math. And if uh, that doesn't appeal to you, well, then you are certainly in the wrong class. Uh, today, we're going to be learning uh, about some basic uh, magical algebra and uh, computational, well, you know, as the name implies, some uh, computational magic. And uh, so uh, the first thing we're going to be do, first thing we're going to do is teach you how to create a arcane calculator. And uh, she uh, she waves her wand and creates this um, like. Basically, it looks. Oh, sorry, someone's playing music in my house. I was just like, what am I hearing right now? Uh, <laughs> I thought I was going crazy. Uh, she uh, she she creates like this uh, polyhedron that looks kind of like a d20 a little bit, uh, but you can see that there are like lines that cross uh, at the vertices and there are like little nodes of light within it. And uh, she starts like flicking the nodes of light back and forth like a uh, like an abacus. So like the uh, those like primitive like counting machines and uh so alex go ahead and give me an arcana check i said it wrong again uh, elix elix it's all right i'm gonna get it one of these days elix like helix <laughs> right yes okay quandrix elix i can remember that i'm sorry a 10 so, uh, <laughs> Elix, you create a, uh, a D4. <laughs> you, you, you create like this prism shape, um, the triangle, the most, uh, simple, but powerful of the shapes. And, uh, although it's not as complex as the professors, it is functional and you are able to, uh, keep up with the lecture. You do, uh, you guys do some arcane computations and uh and um you uh, it takes you uh a little bit longer uh you know because you you've got the uh this uh kind of less advanced calculator but uh you are uh through sheer force of will you're able to uh, keep up with the keep up with the lecture it's just a little bit more stressful than you might have liked uh, uh this is so much harder <laughs> How am I supposed to finish this? <laughs> you are uh, like struggling to keep up at some points. I'm gonna I'm gonna look around to see how my my triangle compares to everybody else's. Uh, so you, so you look over at a uh, pigtail girl and uh, she's got a she's got a twelve sided die or twelve sided uh, prism. Uh, Kadoris, this uh, green-haired elf guy, you see he's got an eight-sided prism. So uh, you, uh, no, no one else, no one else in class has anything lower than a d6 or a six, right, like a cube right. shape. Right, right. Uh, I'm just going to suffer through the class until lunch, trying to keep up. <laughs> You um, make a perception check. Okay, so you're just like, <laughs> you're just so focused on trying to keep up with the with the lecture, and uh, you know, you're you're wholly wholly invested on, uh, you know, you, you take a moment just to kind of glance around, but uh, you 
even that quick moment of looking away, you fall behind and you're like struggling to, to keep up for the rest of the class. So when when she announces that it's time for lunch, you are just like, oh, like relieved that it's time to finally take a break. <laughs> And uh, uh, so people begin kind of starting to collect their things to get ready for lunch. My die four just falls to the ground and kind of shatters into arcane energy. <laughs> <laughs> Beads of sweat. Oh, I'll have to do this again <laughs> after lunch. <laughs> and uh, oh, so you're yeah. you're like you're like rubbing your rubbing your head and uh, uh, the the pigtail girl passes by you. And uh, when you, after finish, like after you finish rubbing your face, you look down at the desk in front of you, and there is a small note folded in front of you. Uh, just uh, for if, uh, on my desk is just tons of notes, way more notes than everybody else, and it's just <laughs> so much scribbles and notes. Who knows how much of it actually makes sense? Um, then after that, uh, I noticed the. Uh, the note that wasn't there previously and uh, look around to see if I could figure out who dropped it or who put it there. And uh, Wh Whoever dropped it is already gone. Mo most, most everyone uh, has either left the class or are still like kind of sitting around and talking to one another. Uh, uh, I'm going to begin opening the note to read it. When you open the note in uh, in like glowing script, it says, "Meet me outside the class five minutes." And then the uh, the the script kind of like lifts off the page and and disappears, and so the the note appears blank once again. Uh, uh okay. Uh, I just like I just uh shuffle all of my papers and try to org try to organize it in the small amount of time I have. <laughs> you uh and you do your my, best to gather guess, everything satchel. together. And, uh, it's not exactly organized, but it's all in there. Uh, and at four minutes and four thirty seconds I like rush outside the uh the 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 classroom I guess looking around to see uh, who, I don't know, just to wait uncomfortably. When you get outside, uh, you look around and most everyone has already taken off for the cafeterias for lunch or or the bow's end or whatever. And uh, you see uh, you see a green pigtail sticking out from behind the corner of the like the quarter just just around the edge of the, the hallway where your class is. Uh, 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 hello? She, uh, she pokes her head out and then she like quickly like gestures you to, to come this way and then, and then disappears back around the corner. Uh, uh I, I kind of look around to see if there's anybody else uh and then began making my way uh toward her i guess Ex excuse me what's uh excuse me as i kind of follow her and she's like she's like checking over her shoulder and like looking around and she's like look i don't want anyone to see me talking to you but you really suck at this class, okay? Uh, uh, thanks. She's like, you're you're never gonna be able to to keep up if you're only using a, a basic arcane calculator. You you've got to do better next time. Whenever you do the spell, do the somatic components this way. And she like kind of like shows you like how she does it, and she she creates her her die twelve again, her twelve sided uh, uh. sphere. Why, why, why are you, thanks, helping me? I don't. And she, uh, she's like, she's like avoiding eye contact with you. She's kind of like looking at the ground. She's like, if Grayson asks, I didn't talk to you, okay? And then she runs away. 
thank you. Uh, I stand there for like a good five minutes. Uh, uh, Bewildered. <laughs> and then I guess I try to recreate the calculator um, with her advice. Go ahead and make another arcana check. You can, well, you can add a d4 to that. Not that you need it, but. <laughs> <laughs> so you, uh, you, following her instruction, you, uh, you're you able to create a eight-sided die. Or eight-sided prison. I keep saying die, but you know what I mean. <laughs> uh, uh, I... I can't, I can't sit there. You like I let you create like the four sided die, but then you you like mirror it so it's like two fours on top of each other, which makes eight. Well, I, I immediately uh, um, what's it called? Actually, I'm pretty sure two fours on top make six. But well, like a pyramid <laughs> shape. If you put two pyramids together, it should be. Because right. the fourth side are being slapped oh, on top of each other. No, pyramid. you're right. You're right. You're right. Okay. Well, <laughs> you, you you know. Her. But a pyramid actually is four, but a four sided die is not four. But <laughs> yeah, eight, eight sided yeah. die is. Yeah. 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 It's yeah I get you. Is two. Yeah, I got you. Doesn't matter. Uh, yeah. Um, what's it called? You got there. I turn. I turn you, the you four start sided with the four die and you double it, oh, yeah. and then you get there. <laughs> yeah. Let's <laughs> get the four. Turn it into a pyramid. Mirror it to get the eight sided. There. functionality and uh, I, once I make it I immediately release, release it wow um I guess they're waiting for me at lunch um um oh, oh, I'm wasting time and I'll begin making my way Toward the cafeteria. Um, All right. Uh, so everyone, yeah. uh, having having had a pretty, well, some more successful than others with their boardings, uh, everyone heads back to the freshman dorms to uh, to the cafeteria for lunch. And uh, when you all arrive, uh, Rampart is already at, sitting at the table, uh, waiting for you. He's like, ah. Hello there, friends. Hey, we missed you at breakfast. I, oh, and he yawns and like uses his trunk as like in place of the hand to to like cover the yawn. He's like, I had a class that was scheduled much too early in the morning, but um, I uh, thankfully was able to make it in time. I just unfortunately had to skip breakfast. Ah, uh, well, at least you're okay. I was a little worried you might be getting sick or something oh no no i'm quite all right i apologize for not uh instruct or not uh let, filling you guys in but archaeomancy is ooh, is uh my instructor is a is a spirit and he likes to do things early he's uh <laughs> oh. the dead uh, the dead don't rest as they say yeah i'm glad i don't have a class like that yeah, I'm an early riser, but uh, I like to eat breakfast. <laughs> well, count yourselves lucky, friends. Um, it uh, it was quite an interesting class. I've never taken instruction from a uh, undead spirit before, but it was uh, most illuminating. That's pretty cool. I uh, unfortunately lost our group five points in my class today. Ah, uh, rotten luck. What happened? Uh, the instructor had us uh, sprout a plant and um, I created a really beautiful plant that was uh, was it red and red, green, with yeah. white, red and green with white spots I think mm -hmm. and it had teeth and it looked cool and then the little fucker bit me 
So I yeeted that pot against the wall, smashing it to pieces. Uh, which, wow. Yeah, which may not Sounds have been like a the, jolly good show. May not have been the best response, but let me tell you, it hurt. So uh, I, I, I showed it, and then the teacher sure showed me. Okay, hey guys, then, sorry I'm uh, late. <laughs> oh, pleasure, uh, pleasure for you to join us. Uh, our Kalen here was just recounting his glorious combat with a uh, a common houseplant. Yeah, uh, oh. I don't, I don't know if it already has a name. I'm sure it does, but I'm going to nickname it the Piranha Plant because it bit me. Oh, that seems morally appropriate. Yeah, I made an amazing fire sculpture out of passion. Out, like, out of passion? What? Yep. You can, uh, you can manifest passion. That's an emotion. Into, into fire. Oh, oh, okay. That makes that makes a lot more sense. Uh, yeah, that's so uh, good. Did you win any points? Did I win any points? <laughs> Just with Xanther. Okay, okay. <laughs> um, the professor didn't seem like a type to reward points, I guess. But uh, I, uh, I got closer as the other. Well, that's nice. That's, uh... So I guess you, uh, really like him? Yeah, he's pretty neat. That's, uh... Cool. Kind of feel like I have a lot in common with him. Well, I'm so glad to hear that you're making friends. I, uh... I've become quite chummy with one of my classmates as well. Nice. Oh, that's good. Who might that be? Uh, he is a owl folk, uh, or an owlin, excuse me. Uh, his name is Javanash. I believe he's uh, also a first year like us. He is part of the... Uh, one of the other groups. I can't seem to remember their name off the top of my head. I've got a lot of a lot of history rolling around from this morning. <laughs> I I haven't really talked to anybody uh, other than you guys since we got here. I've been too excited for our classes that I keep forgetting to talk to other people. I mean, I'm such you a don't nerd. Have to talk to other people. I want to, like <laughs> I said, uh, I was a little sheltered as a child, so I I want to be less introverted. Well, it's only the first week. No need to rush anything. I know. Like I said, I was just Would so excited have... for these classes that I just that was my main focus. <coughs> right. I'll, I'll probably get to. We are going to be here for four years. That's plenty of time. Oh, absolutely. I'm not in any major rush. Has anyone come across our fifth group member? Our silver quill still seems to be missing. No, and I'm kind of surprised that uh, some of the faculty haven't. Uh, even told us anything about that yet hmm. maybe we should go uh, if they haven't arrived by the end of the week maybe we should go find uh, go talk to like Profe a counselor or something Pro yes uh, yes we should meet with Professor Sharpbeak to discuss that uh, I, I agree what uh, what about you guys you do you agree yeah we should uh, do that yeah. sure why not I'm, uh, forgot we almost forgot we needed a fifth person <laughs> uh... Well, need is a bit of an overstatement. Uh, the four of us here are quite the overachievers, it would seem. Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I hope so. And then, In uh... some ways, as long as, uh, as long as our fifth member is not losing points, and in some ways, I uh, I almost feel like it's a bit of an advantage to be only the four of us. Well, we have, uh... are less likely to lose points, but we're also that's another person who could be gaining points. So there's... there's Quite. Well, let's just... Uh, uh, hope he's okay. Right. I, I hope so. Well, hopefully there will be some development before the end of the week. Yeah. That, that would be nice, that would, but... I don't know. Um, yeah. 
I hope they like so, to eat because I want to keep working on my uh, culinary skills. Uh, yes. Uh, yeah, I was working at the library yesterday. Uh, that was nice, I guess. Easy. An easy couple. Uh, couple dollars, I guess. I don't know. That's cool. um. How did how did your job go? I don't know if we talked. I think we just kind of went straight to, to to bed last night. Your work. Yeah. Um. It was it was fantastic. Um. Where's my character? Uh, the head chef. Uh, Guillaume was uh inspirational. I I learned a lot on my first day, and uh, I learned how to make uh one of the main dishes. Which one did I make? Was it the Wither Bloom? No. It was the Silver Quill dish, I think. I didn't write it down. So. It's not under your proficiencies? <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I think it was the Silver Quill. I, I made the, the Silver Quill dish, and uh, Guillaume was impressed that I actually made it correctly on the first try. So I, I managed to impress the head chef. It's good. It's uh, that's good. Yeah. Congrats, I suppose. Yeah, they're starting me out as grunt work with just um, you know basic meal prep and stuff, but uh, I'm excited to show what I'm made of and make my way to cook as well. <laughs> that's good. That's uh, cooking is a good skill. If uh, I'm not much of a chef myself, but you know I can make grilled cheese. Yeah. I, I like cooking because a good meal will always put a smile on anybody's face. Certainly puts a smile on my face. <laughs> I'll gladly eat your cooking any day, okay? Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I'll let you guys know once I make it up to cook, and uh, I'll have y'all come one night that I'm working, and I'll, I'll treat y'all. I'll pay for it, and I'll... Um, ask them if I can cook y'all's table. Oh, that's pretty nice of you. That sounds wonderful. Uh, uh, yes, I certainly won't say no to that, um, I think. <laughs> cool. Cool, 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 cool. Um. Rampart, Destiny, have either so, y'all uh, gotten a, a job yet? Well, I joined the Play Actors Guild, and I'm part of the Distinguished Society of Fine Arts, so I'll probably be doing freelance. Oh, that sounds cool. Yes, I prefer to spend my free time in pursuits of extracurriculars as well. Uh, Elix and I will be joining the Dragon Chess Club together this weekend, I believe. Oh, that if, uh, that's just ah, end. Yes, yes, yes. That reminds I mean, me that I, was, I still need still to sign like, up for the Horticulture Club. I would uh, like to play a game with you at some point. Practice something. I don't know. Perhaps um, after my shift at work tonight. I don't know. Maybe. Well, I had a bit of an early morning. Um, I, I think I'll be turning in early this evening, but uh, perhaps tomorrow we'll have some time to uh, get together. Um, yes, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, works for me, I think. Unless work changes something, I don't know. They tend to be pretty consistent there. O order, uh, keeps the college running and all that. Uh, yes, yes, order is very important. Um... So, I think while there's still your class? time left in lunch, I'm going to leave early to go sign up for the Horticulture Club. So, uh, I'll see you guys at dinner. Uh, All right. Good. Oh yes, uh, I should get back to class and keep practicing my stuff. I guess I don't know. 
Um, are, you, are you having a hard time with it? Um, it's certainly uh, not easy. Uh, that that's that's for sure. Um, it's complicated. But well, I probably I probably won't be any good at it, but I'll help if there's any way I can. Um, can you craft a, an uh, Arcano calculator that uses uh, an Avic Kiss as its basic functions to calculate? I can't say I even know what that is. <laughs> well, I <laughs> just learned what that is about three hours, two hours ago. So I'm still... <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I'm just going to go review my notes and stuff before the second um, half of the class because um, I, <laughs> I need the help. Uh, so I'm going to look with that. Uh, go. Sorry. Um, pick up my bag, leave. And most of you noticed that I probably never grabbed anything for lunch. Well, make sure. Grab something on the way. You must keep up your strength, Elix. I am um, already gone. Well, <laughs> well, I'll I'll see you later, Rampart. You good, good luck with your the rest of your class. You as well. I'll make some more cool sculptures. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Soundboard, go. <laughs> Alright, one time, one time. Uh, Alright, I'll have to time it then for the future. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now, now is your moment. Okay. Um, so you guys, uh, you guys return to class, and uh, the rest of the day plays out pretty uneventfully. Uh, you know, Destiny does a little more flirting with Xanther. Um, now, Kaylin tries not to uh tries not to damage any more pottery <laughs> and uh elix um you uh with your newfound uh tips on the arcane calculator you are much less stressed throughout the rest of the class you still still requires your full attention uh but you're not you're not struggling nearly as much as you were in the first half of the day what they call it when I get that when I get there early, obviously I spend some of that time just studying my notes or whatever. But during the course of the second class, I like um um I don't know how I don't know how to say this like like passively like glancing over to my left um constantly uh but like most, but just awkwardly, and is there any other trying. way to glance over? <laughs> no, uh, um, it's just a uh, a a master class in a disaster. Um, but uh, that's, you, that's you, all. That's... You try to you try to catch her line of sight, but she is intently focused on the oh, lesson. I'm not trying to catch her line of sight at all. <laughs> oh, I'm just. Uh, just awkward. Oh, okay. <laughs> it's, uh, All right. I'm so to, business uh, as usual then. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah. Business as usual. I'm not trying to. If 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 I do if she if I do look like she's gonna uh, catch her on a sight, I instantly look away and try to go back to what I'm doing. Uh, it's just peak, um, just awkward and uncomfortable and mostly confused. And, uh, yeah. And then I quickly leave when the class is over. Just, <laughs> just gone. It's a race to see who can be more awkward and antisocial. <laughs> <laughs> Look at me. I'm the captain now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, things, things go well. Um, did either of y'all want to add anything? Sorry, I just, I was kind of just going to fast forward over the rest of the to the evening. Did I make it in time to find the Horticulture Club to sign up for it? 
Oh, right, right. Sorry. Um, so you head over to the Biblioplex where you remember seeing some flyers and you grab a flyer and it says that the first meeting will be this weekend on Saturday. Okay. And so new members can just show up and uh, if you'd like to join, just uh, just be there. Uh, it's going to be taking place um, actually right here in the Biblioplex. They have these little uh, garden areas. I remember those. Uh, That's where they, one of the riddles yeah. was. So they uh, they meet up there uh, on Saturdays. All right. Uh, same with Dragon Chess. It also uh, most of the most of the extracurriculars usually meet up in the the Biblio. Uh, they have um they have like empty like extra classrooms for uh that are not in use on the weekends that they use for the club meetings basically. Kyle being a true hydro homie, get that water, son. <laughs> yeah, let's go. Hell yeah. Hydro it's that homies. blue part of the Quandrix. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Got to have uh, theory and uh, what is it? Theory and substance. All right, so you, yeah, you guys, uh, the rest of your your afternoons go pretty uneventful. Um, you're uh, Keeping, keeping pace with the morning and uh, yeah, evening comes. So uh, you all retire to your, well, I guess you don't retire yet. I guess you're going your to jobs. your jobs, right? So uh, Elix, you report to the uh, library, Biblioplex and uh, begin the uh, treasury of uh, bringing books to the automatons that then shelve it. This guy's called yep. had a cool name. I forgot. Uh, something archivist. Uh, cogwork archivist. Yeah, yeah, the cogwork archivist. Such a cool name. Um, give me another perception check, Elix. Perception probably gonna fail. That's not too bad. So while you're while you're doing your busy work, your your mind kind of wanders because it's not not very mentally stimulating. It's it's good for you know it's good exercise. Um, okay, cool. Uh, it's good exercise, you know, hauling books around. Uh, but uh, your your mind really has a chance to kind of wander, and uh, you as you're carrying a load of food or load of. <laughs> you read the text, uh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you uh, you see a creature that seems to be kind of watching you, um, and then he, he, they're hiding in the bookshelves. And uh, they, just as you're kind of rounding the corner, they dart back into the bookshelf, uh, disappearing from view. Oh, uh, was it like a small creature? Uh, pretty large, actually. You didn't get a good chance to to see exactly uh, what like species they were per se, but. Uh, um. Excuse me. Then uh. uh excuse me. Very timidly, you see uh a bespectacled uh minotaur poke their head out from the. Shelf of the bookshelf. Oh, they don't. They oh, don't say anything. Wow, like, you're tall. Uh, Anna, did you did you need help? And then they disappear uh, again. <laughs> oh, um, uh, um, I look around <laughs> the bookshelf. <laughs> the uh, the Minotaur has like. Their like face like in a book. Like. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, excuse me, did you uh, need help with anything? Um, uh, no. Uh, okay. Uh, just uh, put 
the book back when you're done, I guess. Um, <laughs> and I will uh, go back to what I'm doing. Uh, when you turn, you. when you turn to leave, uh, he says, uh, uh, in a very, very soft-spoken voice, "My name is Trasmir. Uh, if you need any help, uh, I, I know this library really well." Uh, Spell that for you. It's a mouthful. I know how to spell it. Maybe. So, mirror. Uh, hello, Drazomir. Um, uh, I don't think I need help right now. Um, but thank you. He gives you a thumbs up. Still hiding his face with the book. And I... Uh, uncomfortably moved back to what I was doing, which is my job. And uh, so you, you continue the rest of your shift uh, bringing books to the archivist to reshelve and uh, you do not manage to see Drasimir for the rest of your shift he's if he's still here he seems to be avoiding you mm -hmm. I will continue upon my shift okay yeah you uh, you complete the rest of your shift and uh, the, the rest of the night is yours I will head back to my dorm, I suppose. So, Alkalen, you head on down to the Bozen for another shift, making some tasty, tasty food. And when you get there, it is already popping. Uh, you do have to come right straight from class pretty much over here uh, without really time for dinner. So uh, you're a little, a little hungry, but... Uh, also hungry for knowledge and ready to work. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, Guillaume's there again, and uh, he, uh, with his big uh, tusky grin, he's like, ah, welcome back. Uh, ready for another busy night? Hi, Chef. Yes, sir. Gonna have you on the fry station tonight. Uh, we did have a couple deep fry dishes, so uh, just uh, be careful. The oil is supernaturally hot and uh it'll melt the skin right off your right off the bone so uh don't touch it <laughs> yes chef <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh you'll uh, you'll be doing the fry station i'm gonna have you make your uh chef's tools check 15 cooks utensils uh, so you, uh, yeah, you, uh, you're able to get through the shift without burning yourself, most importantly. Uh, but even better, you're able to uh, get all the orders out on time and uh, cook to perfection. And everything comes out golden brown. Nothing overcooked, nothing underdone. Hell yeah. And yeah. So uh, you, uh, towards towards the end of the night, things kind of start to, to die down a bit. Um, and uh, the chef, you know, once again... Is like uh, you're free to make yourself a make yourself a meal and um, uh, just uh, make sure you finish uh, whatever whatever uh, whatever before you go. Make sure you uh, clean up the fryer and uh, you know drain the oil and everything. Absolutely. Uh, would you mind telling me how to prepare a Quandrix's delight? Oh, the Quandrix Delight. Well, uh, 
It's a bit of a head scratcher, but uh, you seem like a pretty bright chap. Maybe you can uh, get a hang of it. So. So uh, the uh, Quandrix's Delight is a, um, it's a bit of a uh, kind of optical illusion. Uh, you use like a, uh, like a mirror glaze. It's a, uh, it's a, it's a sweet dish. It's like a dessert, but uh, yeah, you use like a, uh, you do like a mirror glaze kind of situation. And then it's got a, it's got like a caramel sauce that you pour that, that melts it. When it melts it, it uh, creates like this kind of chain reaction that makes the whole thing like swirl together into like a uh, kind of repeating fractal pattern of uh, swirls. That sounds awesome. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, it's very sweet. Lots of lots of sugar, but uh, pretty, pretty tasty. And um, the uh, he, he's uh, he tells you he's like, uh, you know, this this dish as as he's like instructing you on how to do it. He's like, this dish is um, not exactly the the most simple thing, but uh, if you follow the instructions step by step and uh, don't deviate from the recipe, it should come out perfect every time. Oh, I'm very good at following instructions. Baking is uh, baking is really uh, not not a lot of room for error. So yeah. uh, you gotta just make sure you get everything to the right temperatures and make sure you don't uh, overdo the ingredients. You gotta science. measure off those measure off those uh, or le level off those measuring cups exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Should I roll a cook's utensils check to see how uh, how well I made it? Uh, sure. Uh, you can roll with advantage because he's helping you. Sweet. Twenty-two. Twenty-two. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it comes up with his with his guidance. It uh, comes out perfectly. Sweet. It's uh, it's quite tasty. So yeah, you uh, you finish finish up uh, washing the washing up and uh, head out. It's about nine o'clock. And um, yeah, if you guys, if there's anything else you want to do with the rest of the day, I'm gonna try another painting. <laughs> Since my last one got ruined. Oh, that's right. All right. Go ahead and roll. Um, what did I have you roll last time? Performance or? Something? I think so. It's probably going to be your go to. All right. Here we go. So feeling super inspired and very confident from your day with uh, Xanther. Um, create another painting. And uh, you, using like uh, like char like it's like a charcoal burning technique. Like you uh, you you have like this uh, canvas that's like not fireproof, but like fire resistant. So you can like you can send right. fire you can send fire bolts at it, and it won't just like completely burst into flames. And uh, so you create like kind of this uh, more of a uh, well. I mean, you can tell me what what were you trying to. So this time she's going to try and pull away from the passion. She's going to do interpreted pic pictures of ravens. Okay. So you do like this kind of, uh, yeah, almost like. Um, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out what happened on music here. Yeah, you, d you do like kind of a more interpretive piece where it's got this kind of like whirlwind of ravens uh, that uh, spiral down into like uh, at the base of it there's like a uh, like a nest but like the nest is it looks kind of like vines mixed with um, mixed with sorry I'm, I'm just kind of struggling for words <laughs> <It's okay. laughs> it, it looks super cool <laughs> <laughs> it works really well with the charcoal, and then she finished it off with some watercolor effect. Sorry, it was, it's like flames and like vines, like kind of mixing together. Sorry, I was, 
<laughs> just drawing a blank on what I was trying to describe there. <laughs> I was trying to paint it in my head as I was talking. <laughs> uh, okay. But it looks great. You're very happy with it. I finally have a piece I can sell. Yeah. So you, you hang it up on the wall to uh, to dry for overnight. Well, I guess it's already dry, but to, to set. You put <laughs> yeah, like a... Yeah, like a set of gauge it on there to make sure that it's not gonna like the charcoal is not gonna like rub off. Laminate it, do everything to it. Make sure it's all good to go. Mm -hmm. And that's day two. Unless, unless anyone what? else needed to do anything. I wanna touch my pickle. Oof. Dill pickle. Fresh out, days. sorry. <laughs> 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 Uh, five minute break. Let's sure. do it. Uh, sh sure, we can go on break. Yeah, you take a quick break, everybody. We'll be right back.
What up? We're back. <clears throat> All right. Uh, oh, let's get some music going. Bada bing. So I woke up in the morning and I. So you go to bed, having finished your second day of classes, and arise Wednesday morning. Time for breakfast. The magical buffet once again fills with all manner of uh, various delicious breakfast items. I'm going to get a fat stack of chocolate chip pancakes this time. Hell yeah. Yeah, they got a whole pancake bar. Add your own toppings. You know, the funny thing is, is I was definitely going to grab pancakes too. Nice. Before you said that. <laughs> nice. But I was like, I'm just going to get like two pancakes and some syrup. It's a pancake. And, uh, call it, uh, and then uh and then chocolate milk for good measure. We're splurging a little. There you go. <laughs> Rampart I'll grab a also bagel. Gets... <laughs> Rampart also gets pancakes. <laughs> he gets he one get... more one more pancake than Alkalin. <laughs> yep. He gets uh peanut butter and banana. <laughs> good stuff. So we all sit down for breakfast. It's about our destiny. Do you not like pancakes? Uh, I didn't get the memo. We were all having pancakes. <laughs> Today is pancake day, obviously. Oh, I was just going to have this bagel and cream cheese. No. Let me go. I'll go grab on, a couple pancakes. On some Wednesday, Wednesdays, people wear pink. On Wednesdays, we eat pancakes. Uh, okay, okay. <laughs> I'll, go, I'll, go get a, I'll, I'll go get myself some pancakes. I want that on a shirt so badly now. On Wednesdays, we eat pancakes. <laughs> <laughs> Coming soon to the Creatures and Corridors merch stream. <laughs> the merch, yeah. merch page, whatever. Uh, All right, I have my pancakes. So glad that you could join us. It's, it has a lot of fruit on it. Blueberry? Strawberry? All of them. All the berries. Anything that All the berries. Berry. Mixed berry. A lot of bananas. The elusive mixed berry. It's like fruits with a side of pancakes. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what she grabbed. <laughs> She's just having some pancakes with her fruit. There ain't nothing like pancakes with bacon. Yeah, that's good. Sweet and salty. Well, what classes does everyone have today? Uh, magical auras. I believe uh, I actually have two classes today. I meet with the play actors guild today. Oh, that should be interesting. Headed over to the Silver Quill campus, I suppose. I suppose. I didn't <laughs> actually <laughs> check. <laughs> Well, perhaps that might be something you'd want to look into. <laughs> I've got You're right. basic arcane artifacts and basic magical auras today. How about that? I also have basic arcane artifacts. Nice. How are you going to make it to both classes? Very carefully. <laughs> That's a good uh, question. I always wondered what would happen if, uh, if you took more classes than there were days in the week. No idea. Gonna, gonna, uh, gonna learn that today. Uh, I suppose we'll see what happens uh, then. Uh, uh, so... I felt like there was something I wanted to say, but I've completely forgotten. So... How's everybody's week going so far? I'm enjoying the classes, minus yesterday's little kerfuffle. But even then, the class was still fun. So far, so good. I can't complain. Well, that's uh, that's a good then. Uh, excited to, for the extracurriculars at the weekend. Oh, me too. Um, I'm super excited. <laughs> I hope they I hope they have like I don't know team games, group games, intramural sports. 
you know, for our group to participate in. Mm -hmm. That would be cool. Yes, I've I've heard there's an intramural sports league, but uh, uh, it's there just are never enough hours in the day. Am I right? I, I suppose so. If only there was, like, a way to I don't be know, in two different places at once. <laughs> right. If only there was a way to to clone ourselves, and uh, I don't know. Well, um, we, uh, all we can do is hope for the best, I suppose. Agreed. I suppose that's true. I guess I'll head to class then. Magical ores, I believe. I need to uh, go uh, find out where this Flactor's Guild meets up. Probably... Biblioplex yeah. with the stage? Maybe. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, good luck. <laughs> I am going to go check that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know where the Magical Auras class is either, uh, but I'm sure it'll be on my little schedule right here that I keep handedly on me. Except yesterday you forgot it. Yes. Yesterday I forgot it. But I remember today. Hey. It appears that Magical Auras is also in the Biblioplex. One of those aforementioned extra class arms. Ah, it looks like we've done the good old good say goodbye, go the same direction route. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's uh, head to the Biblioplex then, uh, Destiny. Uh, and I confirm that that's where I have to go, right? <laughs> Uh, actually, uh, the Play Actors Guild meets in the Silver Quill campus. There's a, there's a, okay, okay. Actual, there's like a full ass stage there. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Just we're not kidding. going this direction. <laughs> All right. I'll see you guys later. Later. Meet back here for lunch. Uh, of course. Oh, well. I'm, uh, so, uh, I'll wait okay. at the table. I'll wait. I'll, I'll wait till everyone leaves at the table, and I'll just sit back for a couple, like a minute or two, um, and then head off to the biblioplex. Cool, cool. Uh, so, uh, Kalen, uh, you and uh, Rampart walk together to Arcane Artifacts, and it's over on the Lorehold campus. I believe this is the first time we've been here as well. So, uh, you head, yeah, you head down into the Lorehold campus, and it is dry. It is like a desert out here, and the the dust and sand and wind is just uh, it's uh, it's pretty abrasive. And uh, you do your best to kind of shield yourself from it. it doesn't seem to bother Rampart with his thick leathery skin, but. Uh, you're uh, you're kind of using your robes to protect yourself from this uh, this uh, sand not quite a sandstorm but just you know sandy breeze. Yeah, I'm gonna change the scent from mint to like ocean breeze because mm. it'll the scent will kind of match the smell a bit or the uh, area will match the mm -hmm. smell a bit. Is that some sort of new cologne? Uh, yeah. Would you like some? I can create any kind of smell you want. Well, I've never been one for perfumes, but sure, why not? I'd like to make a good first impression. Uh, what do you want the smell to be? I have I have options. Yeah, any any scent, and I That's will try to concoct same it. Same as, I suppose the same of, as yours would be fine. You like the scent of the ocean? Sure. You you see me like. I like reach down and I grab a little bit of sand. I uh, pull out my like, um, not wine skin, but the thing that like holds water. Water skin? Yeah, water skin. And like I mix them in a vial and I shake it and I say some magic words to it and then I hand it the little vial to uh, Rampart. All you have to do is uh, uncork it and it will come out as a cloud 
surrounding you and then seep into your pores and then it'll exude the scent from you. Oh, bye. Me. You see like a little uh, <laughs> very light blue color emit from it. You hear the sound of like when when he uncorks it, you hear like ah oh, ah oh, like seagulls <laughs> and like, <laughs> the sound of like waves crashing against the rocks. What is this cat? <clears throat> He's like, oh, that is a uh, quite an interesting bit of magic. I've uh, never seen anything quite like that. I call it uh, magical tinkering. Uh, there's actually a lot of different effects that I can do with this. It doesn't have to be just sense. I can do sounds or visual effects as well. Um, hmm. I can make make things shed light. Um, it's a very nifty feature I've learned as being an artificer. Fascinating. We, uh, we're definitely going to have to visit your home plane someday. Kaladesh seems surely on a different level than unlike any other magics I've ever seen. Oh, I would love to show you around. Kaladesh is a very exciting plane. It's very uh, high-tech. Mag Magitech, high Magitech. Uh, yeah. Well, magic is just technology that we don't understand yet, right? Yeah, exactly. Or, or vice versa. Exactly, <laughs> you get it. Well, I suppose we better hurry on before we're late to class. Uh, yeah, I suppose that did take a take a small detour to do. So, uh, yeah, the Lorehold campus. Um, so as you as you kind of cross through this uh, this central area, you see this massive chasm with all kinds of different ruins, and uh, you do see. Um, uh, a couple of uh, spirits, like ghosts, uh, darting about here and there uh, down below, and uh, archaeologists kind of studying various uh, architectures and uh, writings and whatnot on the walls. But uh, your class is in the central building, which is Kolema Hall. And... Uh, Sorry, I was just reading. Let's see if there's. So the other ones have had some interesting descriptions. Uh, so yeah, so when you enter into here, uh, one of the first things you see is a statue of a of a mage, uh, and he he uh, he looks like a wizard kind of crossed with an archaeologist. He's got like mining equipment and uh, and also like a spell book, uh, and it's a statue of this. Uh, person character does it have a, a name is there like a yes it's somewhere? yes it says uh kolema k-o-l-l-e-m-a oh so the wizard was kolema so i guess this uh this hall was named after him mm -hmm. that's cool uh says uh kolema the wise it's actually the sub subtext there cool does it have like is it just a plaque with his name or does it have like some detail of who he was like what he was what he found or something that uh made... yeah yeah there's like a little description and it says uh it was uh Kalema was uh, one of the pioneers in the field of archaeomancy uh which is the field that uh both studies ancient architecture arcane artifacts as uh Arc, um, arcane artifacts and architecture as well as commuting with the spirits of the past to learn in commune <laughs> with the spirits of the past <laughs> old inside joke from one of our other campaigns <laughs> um, but uh, <laughs> yeah uh, it uh, basically recounts like the, the history of their life and uh and it says uh, their spirit uh, can still be contacted uh, to uh, to learn valuable insight from their lives. Oh, that's exciting. And um, Rampart is just like, oh, I, I 
I hope that someday we'll be able to speak with this uh, Kalema. Seems like uh, they've got many great stories for us. Absolutely. Maybe on an off day. Yes. Uh, perhaps. Perhaps another time. We should. Uh, we should get to class. Yeah. So. Uh, so when you get to class, the the lecture hall is probably like. So your other classes over in Witherbloom have been like normal, like classroom sized. This one is like the size of like an auditorium, but like maybe like twice as big. Okay. It is just this massive lecture hall and uh, unusually large, despite even the, the size of the, like the classes, there's quite a few people in the class, but this room is especially large. Uh, when you get here, it doesn't seem like the professor has, uh, has arrived just yet. I'm gonna sit with Rampart, for sure. Take a seat, and um, let's see who else is here. Oh. So Rampart. Shift. The uh, scruffy looking Allen guy from your orientation also wanders in and uh, he sees uh, he sees Rampart and they uh, they both uh, exchange kind of nods and uh, he sits down on the other side of uh, Rampart uh, on, on so you're on one side he's on the other side and he's gone yep oh wait doesn't she know D and D time means do not disturb? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Class is in session. Okay. Five points from Gryffindor. Dang. Five points from my roll. No, I'm just kidding. Oh <laughs> yeah. no. I was just saying uh, the the Owlin guy uh, sits down on the other side of Rampart. I uh, extend a hand out for a handshake and hey, I'm Al Kalen. What's up, man? Name's Javanesh. He gives you a big, hearty handshake. Uh, it's nice to meet you. Uh, you excited for this class as much as we are? Yeah, I'm pretty much always, uh, already aced it. I just, uh, you know, I'm just showing up as a formality. Oh, I see. So you already know uh, what we'll be learning then? Yeah, it's uh, it's all about uh, magic items, right? Well, I'm sure some of it is. It's gonna be a breeze. I ain't even worried about it. <laughs> and uh, he, uh, instead of taking out his notes, he uh, takes out a uh, like <laughs> he takes out like a handheld game system of some kind and starts uh, starts playing it under the table. Is that the game cartridge 3000? Yeah, man, got it right fr fresh from uh, fresh from Kaladesh. I uh, I got it inside connection. Oh, you don't say. You know, uh, my my parents actually worked with the Vidalcan who created that. For real? Yeah. Whoa, that's super cool. So you must like know about all the all the fresh releases before they even come out uh yeah on the on the older editions my parents used to actually get me the game before they officially released in stores whoa man that's freaking sweet and uh uh whenever uh like you guys want to like continue like gushing about uh video games but uh you hear this kind of low, like, you thought at first it was thunder, but it actually is massive footsteps. And uh, you see uh, from one of the ginormous doors, uh, the professor comes in and he is a stone giant. And it's our boy, Osgear. Nice. So this, uh, this 
a uh, huge stone giant uh, still has to kind of duck to get under the door and in a booming voice he says all right class get out your notes it's time to begin uh today we'll be studying uh arcane artifacts and for our first assignment you will be attempting to identify this ring and uh he uh he has like um what do you call it like a uh a hammer and chisel and he uh he just like taps the He's just like holding the chisel. He's not like holding the chisel against anything. He's just holding it. And he like taps the end of his chisel with his hammer and in front of you, a metal ring uh, materializes and you see rings materialize in front of the other students as well. Nice. That's cool. Uh, if you do not know the identify spell, do your best to identify it through uh, your best guess. I do not know the identify spell. Well, then you're going to have to roll a skill check. Woo! So uh, go ahead and roll... Investigation? Yeah. Yeah. Can I guidance myself? Sure. Uh, ooh, I got the four, though. That puts me at 15. Uh, so uh, Rampart, who does know identify... Uh, quickly uh, identifies the ring and uh, writes down his answer and uh, goes up to the front of the class to hand it in. And uh, Javanesh uh, uh, you see um, as as uh, Rampart is getting up to go hand in his answer, uh, you see Javanesh uh, quickly. You see him like uh, like craning his neck to look at uh, Rampart's paper, and then he writes down the same thing that Rampart wrote down, and and goes to hand it in. Goes goes up to hand it in. Like as he's getting up, I, did I did I notice that he did that? Yeah, yeah, you saw it. Uh, you know, if I was the teacher, I would have made each ring have a different enchantment so that this exact scenario couldn't happen he's like well you aren't the teacher now are you mister I got the fresh game systems alright fair enough if you want to turn it in hoping that it's the same ring then by all means trust me I got this in the bag and he like winks at you as he gets up to go turn it in <laughs> if you say so so uh, after studying the ring, uh, you you look for a bit and um, you determine that this ring um, Uh, so, uh, you, you study the ring and, uh, it has kind of this weird, like, it looks like the top of the ring is, uh, in, instead of just like a band, it's, it's got like a, it's like a flat part on the top and it looks like a brain almost like it's got these. Yeah. It's got, it looks like, uh, like almost like a cross section of like, a like somebody's brain. And, uh, so you, you spend some time kind of studying it and, uh, you uh, determine that it is one that protects you from uh, mental uh, attacks. Cool. You know, kind of, kind of putting putting two and two together with that, as well as uh, you know, studying studying some of it. You you try you know casting a few spells to to see if it has any kind of reaction to it, and that is the conclusion that you came to. I'll jot that down on my paper and, and turn that in. So you uh, you hand your uh, you hand your paper in and uh, you sit down next to Rampart and Rampart's like, so what did you get? Uh, what I deduced 
since I do not know the identify spell, is that my ring has some sort of mental protection. Most astute, Alkalen. Uh, that was, uh, uh, mine was a ring of mind shielding, so it would appear that uh, your theory would be correct. Fantastic. Javanesh is just like, yes, score one for the J-Man. And then so the uh, professor uh, says, uh, very good. Uh, Everyone who was, he he, like names off everyone who got it correct. He said, everyone who was correct, uh, you'll gain 10 points to your team. So, uh, or uh, sorry, five points. So you'll get 10 total, five for you, five for Rampart. stack points too much I think yeah crazy. just trying to it's just the correct answer and it like you could literally cast a spell to get the answer so a mm-hmm. low point here makes a lot of sense just trying to keep up with all these points okay uh, so that is arcane artifacts uh oh so Alkalen is everyone's like getting their things together getting ready for lunch uh the thought crosses your mind that uh you, the professor did not uh collect the rings again and that if you if you wanted to you could probably slip this ring in your pocket and, and no one would see it no, I'm not a thief. I'm gonna go up to the professor and return it. Like, uh, professor, it seems you forgot to collect the ring. Oh, <laughs> appreciate it. I'm a bit absent-minded. Thank you, Alkalen, for your honesty. Yes, sir. I, I, uh, I'm not a, a thief, so I wanted to make sure you got it back. I should hope not. Have a good lunch. I'll see you this afternoon. Uh, actually, I think I will be in Magical Auras this afternoon. I have two classes today. He, uh, he chuckles at you with, like, a knowing grin, and he says, I'll see you after lunch. Oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know what that means, but Okay. <laughs> So, uh, we're going to go on to the next class now, which is, you know what? Let's go ahead and do Magical Auras, and then we'll do Play Actors Guild last, if that's cool, Sky. All good. Fiend. Fiend. Did it again. Sorry. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm so bad at this. That's okay. Um, okay. So, uh, Magical Auras. So, Elix, uh, you head down to the Biblioplex, and, uh... Something a bit confusing happens when you get there. Uh, you walk into class. Now Kalen is already sitting there waiting for you. Huh? I thought you went with Rampart. Uh, what? What do you mean? I have magical auras today. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> uh. Uh, I don't know how I'm supposed to roleplay this out, so I think it'll be funnier if I, uh, I don't know what he's talking about. I think it'll be funnier if I don't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, yeah, sure, whatever. Uh, I guess I'll sit next to uh, okay, Lynn. Um, so... So how are you gonna go to uh, your 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 other class? Uh, I guess I'll go there after lunch. Oh <laughs> uh, well, I mean, I guess as long as the professors are okay with that. Yeah. I'm sure, this isn't the first time this has happened. Yeah, they never told uh told me how today was going to work. They just said um that I'd figure it out, which I I don't understand, but uh, I guess we'll. I guess I'll find out today. Huh. Probably magic or something. I don't know. Uh, 
I don't know if there's magic that's able to make you be in two places at once. There's at least not been any that I've researched other than some, like, really high-level magic that creates a clone of yourself. But it's not, like, uh. actually you. I don't know, it's hard to, uh, there wasn't a whole lot of detail on it. It was, uh, so, I couldn't read, I couldn't understand, uh, a lot of what was written about it. Uh, well, I mean, hopefully they explained it to you, so, <laughs> I don't know, I don't know much about high-level magics at all. Neither do I. Me either. <laughs> uh, so everyone's uh, kind of filing in, and uh, you see a couple more first years uh, that from your orientation that look familiar. Uh, these these four specifically, and um, yeah, the uh, the professor comes in, and as soon as he comes in. Uh, he's like walking briskly, slamming, slams the door and uh, like very, has very little patience. And uh, you can tell he's like just ready to kind of get this over with. And he's just like, all right, students, open your books to page uh, 47. We'll be beginning with basic magical auras. And uh, today we'll be creating a gravitational field uh Please keep in mind to uh, not to make it too strong or you will cause damage to your classmates around you. Anyone who causes property damage will be getting points deducted. You may begin. Uh, how do we create this field? What? Yeah. Uh, well, if you are listening open the book and turn to page 47 where you will find instructions on how to create your magical fields. Any more questions and I'll be deducting points. Uh, sorry. Uh, um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Can't I, make all uh, the professors nice. You gotta have that one asshole. Not. That's true. What's it called? What's it called? Some of the, uh, the characters showing in the background aren't on the class schedule. I don't know if that's intentional or not. Or it's actually the other. Uh, I I may have added them after I took that screenshot. To be honest. Oh okay. Um. I uh, I will. Yeah yeah I I, I added some some. So just. just okay. Read. No worries. Um, I will begin reading the book and trying to create this aura of shenan stuff I too will attempt gravitational magic I'll uh I'll study it and I will try to uh like help guide Elix through the understanding like we're working together yep that's fine do y'all wanna uh roll to like you give him the help action, or he gives you the... It sounds like you're helping him, so yeah. I guess Elix would be the one to roll. I was more going for the guidance spell, too, but I guess um, the help action is better. Yeah, Elix, why don't you roll uh, with advantage and uh, his guidance, and uh, it'll be in just an arcana check. So, uh, you know, kind of sharing notes and not getting very much uh, help from the professor. Uh, the two of you kind of put your heads together and and work through uh, the, the basics of this. And it's, uh, it's a pretty rudimentary enchantment magic. Um, you're not super familiar. Either, neither of you are really super familiar with any kind of like gravity based magic. Um, but uh, the book actually does a pretty good job of explaining it. So uh, you're able to kind of work it out and uh, collectively uh, 
uh, create an enchantment. So uh, whenever you do, uh, you enchant the desk with a magical field that uh, creates like kind of a slow orbit. So, you know, you, you drop like an apple and a quill and a pot of ink or whatever. And it has like this very nice, pleasing uh, gravitational circle that uh, in, it uh, encircles the desk. That's interesting. wonder how I could use this. How long does it last? Um, lasts for about a minute. Um, yeah. I, professor, professor, I think I did it. The, uh, the professor comes to the front of the class and, uh, inspects your work and then take, takes his wand and tries to like push the, uh, one of the objects out of the gravitational field and he pushes it out of the field, but it, uh, the field is strong enough that it, it sucks it back in before, before the item can fall to the ground. And he says, Hmm, not bad working together teamwork. You know what? Color me impressed five points to the high rollers. Uh, thank you, professor. Go for a high five with Elix. Uh, high four. How many fingers the Vodalkin have? <laughs> five, I think. Uh, you you hear uh, you hear what sounds like the shattering of glass, and uh, everyone's like attention kind of snaps over to uh, where Aurora and Kadoris are uh, trying to create their magical field. And uh, it seems that they have made it a bit too strong. It's uh, it, it was sucking in uh, items from other people's desks. And uh, the professor is just like, please contain your enchantment. And they, uh, they, they try to dispel it. And uh, all the stuff just topples to the floor, creating a huge mess and a huge racket. Everyone's just kind of looking at them just like, uh, that sounds he's like, like destruction of property. He's like, you could learn a thing or two from uh, these two pupils over here. Five points from the, in, is that the Fantastic Five? I think so. Uh, five points away from the dream team. And Aurora's like, Doris, you dumbass. You got us fucking in trouble. And he's like, it's not my fault. I did what the book said. Oh, oh, you're supposed to. Ooh, I forgot to read that part. I only read the first couple sentences. <laughs> Relatable. <laughs> I know, dude. Me, me as fuck. How close are they to us? <clears throat> They're like uh, two tables over. Oh, I'll be like, um, hey, next time we could all work together. Maybe we can truly impress the teacher if we've got, you know multiple minds going at it. Uh, Aurora looks at you and she's just like, do I know you? Uh, yes, we had uh, introduction to reanimation on Monday. That was a rhetorical question. Uh, I, I don't care. Okay. I'm like, wow, <laughs> bitch. <laughs> Kadoris is just like forgive my team member uh, she's doesn't play well with others and uh, she shoots him like a like a death stare and he's like we'd love the help I, I'll take all the help I can get isn't he also the dude that I got the negative relationship point with on Monday mm, no 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 that's uh, I'm Kadoris the one who you were just talking to right now is the one with the green hair Oh, uh, okay. Grayson was the one that she got the, the oh, rival point Okay, so with. it's these two that we're talking to. Yeah, yeah. And Sorry. I thought this was the a lot guy. Of, a lot of names being thrown around here. Yeah. You gotta go over the handouts every week. Dude, I've been, like, studying these names, like, left and, like... I, I've got them memorized, but I've also been preparing this campaign for a while, so... <laughs> I've been... I've got them all, like... 
right. Um, Why don't we finish this class working together, and maybe me and Elix can help you guys shore up where y'all went wrong. I just don't want to break uh, anything else. Uh, whatever you guys want. Uh, I think class is going to be over shortly. Well, maybe after the lunch break. Yep. Yeah, just okay. about lunch time. All right, Destiny. You. My turn. <laughs> you you go to the biblioplex thinking that's where it is, and then you see the flyer saying that it's uh nope, it's actually at the rose stage. Ooh, rose stage. Rose stage. And you are going to need these two, I think. Let's change this music down. Okay. Oh, nice. I think I might even have a new. Okay, well, first we gotta go to Silver Quill. So. Let's check that out first. Okay, Silver Silver Quill Campus. It's on the uh, north side of the of the whole place, and uh, yeah, it's uh, very different than the rest of the college. Kind of has a very like dramatic look to it. Everything is very like stark contrast with lots of like. It reminds you a bit of the Prismari with like some of their like architectural flourishes, but there's just something like kind of like drab and not quite as vibrant. Uh, everything is like very like bleak, like shades of black and white, uh, as opposed to the more colorful reds and blues of Prismari. Uh, and there seems to be like ink stains everywhere. Like people are just it's like. It's like somebody like ran through here just like spilling ink like nobody's business. Yeah, I avoid any ink stains. <laughs> uh, so you 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 kind of make your way over to this uh, this large uh, amphitheater, and uh, it really is uh, really is quite beautiful. They've got kind of these Roman columns, and uh, kind of reminds you of like a Colosseum almost. Uh, with the big like uh, circular design and uh, there's a large when you enter in there's a large stage in the middle with seating that uh, goes all the way around it so uh, instead of like a typical theater where it's just kind of like audience on one side it's like in the round like the like Madison Square Garden um, and uh Sorry, I was just reading to see if there was anything else exciting going on. Um, I really dig the aesthetic of this campus. I do too. Me three. Oh, here we go. This is what I was looking for. Okay. Uh, so you hear when you when you walk in, people are like already like kind of like warming up, like doing vocal exercises, and like some people are like uh, reciting, uh, like practicing uh, various like uh, lines for some like 
uh, either monologues or a play maybe. And uh, when you come in, uh, you see your good old pal. Um, you see Quintilius uh, waiting for you there, and, as well as Rubina. And uh, they both, as you walk in, uh, <laughs> Quintilius is like, well, 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 look what the cat dragged in. I get that a lot. <laughs> Are you a cat person? Well, I can never have a pet. Um, father did not approve of that, but I probably would be. <laughs> no, I mean, like, are you a cat person? Like, you know, the, with the ears, the tabaxi or the leonin, like. Do you need glasses? <laughs> <laughs> Rubina's like, uh, forgive my teammate, uh. Comedy is not his strong suit. Uh, welcome. Uh, so this is the uh, this is the Play Actors Guild, and uh, I take it you're here to audition. Yeah, I figured this would be a good break in the week. You know, it's it's important to to take some time away from class. The uh, the course load can get pretty pretty stressful, especially for being a first year. Um, I, I'll tell you, I. I thought about taking a, a full load like my big sister, but uh, I'm just I'm just not as smart as her. It's also just draining. Uh, yeah, it's it's an all day affair. Not not a whole lot of time for breaks either. But um, yeah, we're just uh, we're just waiting for auditions. Uh, apparently, uh, they're already starting the first production for uh, there's going to be a play in a couple of weeks so uh Ooh. we're uh, we're waiting to audition any idea what the roles are going to be i don't know it's some kind of uh tragedy uh some kind of story from the world of theros i, I don't know i'm i'm not super familiar with the plane but uh it sounds interesting it sounds exciting hmm. sounds like a little bit of maybe heroes yeah, it's a story about heroes that were chosen by the gods to defeat a great evil. Pretty inspiring stuff. Oh, I can't wait to try out. Never done anything like this before. Well, uh, I've dabbled in a bit of acting, but uh, haven't really been in any official productions. What about you, uh, Quintilius? Do you have any experience? Well, you could say something like that. Uh, I'm a uh, bit of a legend where I come from. And Rubina's like, oh, here we go again. He's like, I was a child star. Mm. I was had the leading role at the age of five. Oh, little that's orphan, impressive. Little orphan Andy. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> yes, it was. Uh, I was selling out theaters while you were still in diapers. Oh dear. <laughs> well, I hope you'll show us the ropes. Uh, if I'm feeling generous, maybe I'll let you uh, bring me water to my dressing room. Um, <laughs> you know, stars got to have their uh, every whims catered to. Rubina's just like rolling her eyes the whole time. Right, right. Well, well, we'll see. They do have private dressing rooms here, right? <laughs> Guess we'll find out. Uh, so uh, one of the uh, like upperclassmen seems to be kind of like running the auditions. Um, so student-led thing the professors are only like involved in a uh advisory capacity but uh it is actually who is the one i have this written down i gotta get these notes together my notes are messier than elix's uh. <laughs> <laughs> Challenge accepted. (laughs) 
Uh, oh, oh, it's Trixie, right. I just don't have a portrait for her yet. I was like, I know somebody. Let me upload a picture for her. The same chick I owe a favor to? Mm hmm. You do yeah, have I'm a picture. I'm pretty sure you did. You made some kind of goth chick, I think. I think I did. I just forgot to. Maybe. I remember you posted it somewhere. Oh, yeah, I, I know I posted it on it Discord. Just... There she is. Okay, I'll find the I'll find the full art. Already found it. Well, oh, I found the token. I'm guessing. I don't know if you found that. I don't know about the full art. I tagged you in it on Facebook. I yeah, I haven't found the full art, but I I got the token right here. So this will this will do. For Bing, yeah. There she is. There she is. <clears throat> and uh Trixie, uh so she she calls uh she calls Destiny up and uh is there uh she uh, her and uh, a couple other uh upperclassmen are like sitting a couple rows back and uh she's like, Okay, uh Destiny That's me. Is there any uh, particular part you wanted to try out for? I'm not too familiar with the parts, so I will just try out in general. Maybe there's something you need to fill. Oh, perfect. And uh, she uh, uh, she like flicks her flicks her wand, and uh, a couple of papers fly into your hand. It's got a got a script with a couple of lines on it. Uh, go oh, ahead and uh, go ahead and read us this monologue. I'll read through it quietly at first before I for to prepare myself mentally and physically and vocally. Give it a couple. Read it. Mm -mm. It's uh, <laughs> I'm waiting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a um, it's basically like a uh, a monologue about a uh, heroine who is like like on her dying breath she's like about to she's about to die so like dramatic death scene and uh <laughs> you can uh you can go ahead and give us your best rendition of that followed by a performance check <laughs> okay let, let me think for a moment okay, take, <laughs> let me take, like take, channel take let me channel like hestia or something <laughs> <laughs> there you go let's see <clears throat> oh, here, Friends. let's find some more dramatic music. Oh. <laughs> Maybe not that. There we go. Okay, that's your work. So am I playing like a dying person? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're you're like a a, a, a dying a heroine, like a dying heroine, like on her t saying her last words to uh, just like n to no one in particular, just kind of to whoever's listening. Friends, draw closer. I I feel my goddess calling for me. I think it's time. Please take care of that village. It's where I grew up. This is all I have left for you. Ooh, performance. <laughs> You hear a few sniffles out in the audience as uh, as people react to your your moving uh, soliloquy. 
what do they call it? Eulogy, self eulogy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and you uh, you finish, uh, you get a you get a few scattered applause. Rubina especially is just like, woo, go destiny. <laughs> <laughs> She gets a little flustered. <laughs> She's like, oh, no, shit. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Quintilius is just like, just like, whatever. <laughs> I blow a kiss <laughs> and I get off stage. <laughs> <laughs> so Trixie's like, hey, that was really good. Um, so uh, we'll, we'll have the uh, roles posted next week and uh, you'll uh, you'll know then if you uh, got the part or not. Excellent. But, I can't wait. But uh, thanks, everybody, for coming in and uh, looking forward to working with you and we're going to have a great production this year. And I'll, I'll stay for uh, both their auditions, too, so I can cheer them on. Yeah, so um, Rubina's... Uh, Rubina gives her uh, gives her she actually uh, reads from the same uh, same script that you had and uh, she uh, does a pretty good job but it's a little like soap opera a little melodramatic like very <laughs> like over the top and maybe a little uh, maybe a little cheesy at some points and she's just like and now I die <laughs> <laughs> Oh, what a cruel world! <laughs> and uh, people are just like, okay, all right, that was good. <laughs> I cheer for her. Just like the same way. I'm like, yeah! You go, girl! <laughs> and uh, Quintilius goes up to do his, and uh, his is uh, for one of the male roles, but uh, he uh, he's uh, like giving a speech before battle and he's just like uh you can see like when he steps onto stage his like he really does he really is like a good actor he, you can see him kind of meld into this role and he's like a uh like a spartan general kind of like preparing the men for battle and he's just like friends romans countrymen lend me your ears today we fight a great battle against the forces of darkness Fear not the abyss, for the abyss should fear us as we charge bravely into battle, destroy our enemies. And uh, whatever he finishes, everyone's just like, yeah, ha! it's just like thunderous applause. Everybody in the auditorium is just really impressed by his work. Very nice. And uh, Trixie is just like, wow. Uh, didn't know we had so much talent in this upcoming uh upcoming year uh this is this is really promising we're uh this is gonna be a good show i think we've really got a lot of potential here and uh Quintilius is just like yes yes i'll uh i'll be accepting all roses and uh confessions of love in my trailer what we don't have trailers what do you mean we don't have trailers <laughs> I'll get used to it. <laughs> uh, Ru Rubina like catches up with you afterwards. She's just like, "Hey, you did really good up there." I hope I didn't look too nervous. No, not at all. I mean, everybody's a little nervous, so I think they they understand. And you did great. I hope we get to perform together. That would be. The best. Imagine if we got the twin sisters roles. That would be so cool. Oh, that would be so dope. I would like that. You know, I've I've got a sister of my own, but uh, I always wish she was a little bit more like you. Uh, my sister's not exactly that personable. Oh, well, I'm sure you guys get along, though. Uh, kind of. I've, I've always felt like I'm just kind of following in her footsteps you know she went to Strixhaven I go to Strixhaven she's like a prodigy in her class I'm just I'm just me you know and that's what's important you shouldn't try to be her you're your own person uh, thanks Destiny I, I really needed that I appreciate it yeah of course 
So, Destiny, you are actually going to gain a relationship point with Rubina. Yay! You guys are friends now. Friends. <laughs> and that's lunch. So, whenever you guys reconvene at the freshman dorms for lunch, uh, something kind of weird happens. You see, uh, you know, Alex, you're, you're walking without Kaylin back to class, uh, but you see Rampart also walking without Kaylin. And uh, when you guys get there, there are two Alkalins. We do the, the, the pointing meme. <laughs> Spider-Man meme, yeah. which is like... <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, Rampart looks... Uh, did... Are you... Am I the only one seeing this? Uh, uh, I'm so confused right now. How How am I over there when I'm also right here? Sounds like the school solution to double stacking, but uh, f what? This is way above my pay grade. Do you both of you need to eat? Blame b both of us at the same time, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the. I don't know what to make of this. Oh, we have five people now. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps this is our secretive fifth member filling in for uh, Alkalin. Oh, hey, guys. Oh, my God. There's two Alkalins. <laughs> Both of us look at Destiny. Hi, Destiny, at the same time. <laughs> oh, God. That's weird. Hmm. Yeah. Are you... <laughs> what, what happens if they... Try, uh, try giving each other a handshake. And so when you, uh, when you try to shake your, your own hand, okay, Lynn, you feel like this magnetic force, like, repelling off your hand. You're not able to actually touch your other version of yourself. Huh. That's interesting. So I wonder how this is gonna work, because, and this is the one that was with Rampart speaking, uh, because I remember taking the class with Rampart, and then the other one's like, and I remember taking the class with Alex, but I don't remember, and they're like pointing at each other, taking, or one, the one that went with Rampart's pointing at Elix, and the one that went with Elix is pointing at Rampart, <laughs> and he's like, but I don't remember going to class with him. They say that at the same time while pointing at <laughs> the opposites. Rampart's kind of like scratching his chin with his trunk and he's just like, well, I guess we'll find out at the end of the day or tomorrow, maybe. Uh, and we'll see if your memory catches up with itself. I mean, but... you only have one bed, right? So. Well, I don't know uh, if hopefully... I go to the dorm and it's a bunk bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hello. And I thought one out, Kaylin, was a, was a handful. I... I do not have the knowledge to deal with this. I'm just going to assume it is part of the school's magic and hope it's over with at the end of the day. We're not able to <laughs> physically touch each other, but think of all the work that we could accomplish together. Uh, with, with our brilliance, it would make uh, all the experiments that I like to perform go so much quicker. And then the other Alcan's like, great minds think alike. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I don't get the impression that they would clone you for free. Uh, that feels like a little bit like cheating, you know. Like I wonder if Xanther has a twin. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can ask him, I suppose. I don't know. I don't know why him having a twin matters, but. Oh, it does. Yes, Destiny, tell us, why does Xanther having a twin matter? 
Listen, let's just go eat, okay? <laughs> Who's hungry? <laughs> you know, now that you mention it, I am quite famished. You see one Al Kalen getting, like, a burger and fries, and the other Al Kalen is getting, like, soup and sandwiches. Hmm. This whole thing is slightly weird. I think I'm just going to eat and go back to class. But who am I going back to class with? I have no idea. <laughs> the well, one that you went with earlier points to himself and goes, that would be me. We had the we had the class together. Are you sure? Yes, because I remember taking the class with you. I do not remember going to class with Rampart. Oh, my audition went well. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, you had oh, an audition nice. today? Yeah. I don't know if I got the part yet, but we'll see. That's great. Well, that's, uh, hopefully it all goes well. Break a leg, so they say. Speaking of going well, uh, the one that went with Rampart speaks up. Uh, me and Rampart got our team, uh, five points each for, um, figuring out what the magic item was, uh, Luckily, the big guy here is able to cast Identify. I had to actually work for it, but, I mean, he had to learn the spell, so he still had to work for it, but he has it easier than I do. But uh, but I figured it out mechanically by, you know, trying to figure out what it does. Um, and then That's the, impressive. Yeah. And then the one that was with Elix uh, goes, yeah, me and Elix worked on today's lesson together and impressed the teacher and got our group five points. Oh, uh, yeah, we did. I'd almost forgotten. <laughs> uh, so, hopefully things keep going well, I suppose. Another team lost points. Can't remember how much they lost, though. I think they lost points. Maybe I just imagined that. I think they lost five points. I don't remember if it was each uh, or not, though. I think I think right. it was just five points total. Well, that's uh, worth something. So... Um, I don't know. I guess we just finish eating and um, go back to class with somebody. Yeah. I'm excited to see how this is going to turn out. Most, most curious yet upsetting. <laughs> 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 so uh, the five of you uh, step outside to return to class. Uh, but as you are getting ready to go your separate ways, uh, you hear a commotion uh, that seems to be happening. Switch. Commotion? No idea what the song is, but hear me. Uh... There seems to be some people kind of like freaking out as a large creature is making its way is like it seems there seems to be this large creature that has uh gone gotten loose into the uh campus and uh a Odd looking creature with a too many limbs. Uh, it's got uh, eight legs total. Kind of a scaly looking beast. Uh, it also curiously has a monocle and a top hat uh, placed precariously on top of its spiny head and uh, just above its ferocious looking fangs. And. Uh, it uh, is kind of like growling and snarling at some of the students that are passing by. Oh, it's uh, adorable. We, sh we should run. That's uh, run. Yes. We may need to help the students. Uh, I'm going to cast guidance on Rampart because I think you can use guidance on initiative if we hit initiative. 
Yes, we should intervene. This uh, this looks dangerous, and I don't see any professors around. Does anyone know what that is? No, I, I have no idea what that is. You can make a history check. I think Rampart's going to make a history check. I'm going to try. Uh, no fucking clue. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, but Elix might. Elix, so while you were uh, while you were putting books away in the library biblioplex, uh, you actually came across a a tome of uh, magical creatures, and uh, just out of curiosity, like while you're walking, you were kind of like flipping through the pages, and uh, you came across a creature that looks just like this. Uh, it's a basilisk. And basilisks oh. are uh, very dangerous creatures uh, because they have the ability to turn something to stone just by looking at it. Hey, uh, I as I immediately I'm just like, wait a second. I think I've, I think I, I think I remembered about something about that. Don't look at its eyes. I immediately like just I immediately turn around and face the other direction. If I if, so, if if I remember correctly, its eyes can turn you to stone. So just uh, don't make which... eye contact with the creature. Did you do you know what it likes to eat, maybe? Maybe we can no. calm it down? I was reading some book called a monster manual and all it said well all it said was magical monsters. Um and it, and I mentioned that this thing, I believe it's called a basilisk, can turn people to stone if, by making eye contact. So I would recommend not looking at it. Um, I don't know anything about the top hat monocle or whatever. That's a little bit, uh, but uh, so we we probably we should. shouldn't kill it, but we should try and maybe knock it out or something. Uh, or we can just run. Why in the world would we try to fight something like this? This thing could kill us. That's I'm coward sure. talk. We can take it. I'm sure we'll be fine. Yeah, yes, we, I'm sure that people to, felt that way. Uh, we have to distract it from the others who can't defend themselves until hopefully a teacher or something can get here soon. But until or then, we I just we all run it. away until a teacher gets here. <laughs> Do you all want right. to go find a teacher? <laughs> Yeah, why don't you you uh, go get a teacher, and the rest of us will stay here to try to protect the others. Uh, I don't know where the teachers are right now. Already, high rollers to battle, and uh, Rampart's gonna uh -huh. cast bless. I'm gonna cast mage armor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, everybody can get an action in if they want. Just, uh, I guess I'll new guidance on uh, Rampart so you can use it for initiative roll. Uh, I guess uh, I'll also three. cast Mage Armor. So I will bless uh, I will bless you three. I'll bless everyone but myself. Which one? Well, I th Wait, yeah, are there two of me? Yes. <laughs> Which uh, one does he bless? The one that went to class he went to class with. Did he recognize that one? Did they yeah. have to just... <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, let's roll initiative. This, bless, uh... bless is attack rolls and... Saving throws. And saving throws, okay. And I'm not I'm not gonna be standing like in front of everybody. I wanna stand back. Yeah, Rampart's usually uh he kind of interposes himself usually whenever combat arises. Oh, that was almost a fourteen plus. Should I roll for each Al Kalim? Or uh ju just once. Okay. I smell bacon. Bacon. My wife's making Bacon. 
which I almost said to go give the basilisk a kiss. <laughs> Oop, Tango disappeared. I said it. Don't forget. Oh, no, that's a skill check. Never mind. Don't forget to forget. Finally get to go last. You did roll the die four for Rampart's initiative? Yes. Yeah, okay. I have my shield and my alchemist supplies out. Oh yeah, also we can see Rampart's initiative being rolled. I know, I know. Okay. He's on your sure. team. <laughs> wow, I'm just making sure that's intentional. <laughs> yeah, it is. That the basilisk should be hidden though. Ooh. He rolled high. That we see. Because it's on the turn order. Uh <laughs> He, the basilisk is whipping around, but uh, whipping his head around, kind of looking, not really sure, <clears throat> excuse me, what to do. Uh, and he, uh, when, when Rampart says, all right, high rollers to battle, he uh, snaps his head over in that direction and he's going to charge that way. Uh, so he, uh, he moves uh, the 20 feet towards Rampart and uh, he's going to attempt to bite uh, Rampart. Chomp. Oh my god. Critical hit. Rampart's insta dead. <laughs> no. Insta KO. I, I did roll a critical hit. Oh, Yelsa. that could kill him, bro. That could. I don't have my damage set up to be for, for the max damage. Yep. Yeah. Okay, uh, thankfully he's not dead, but he is unconscious, so, <laughs> <laughs> so your bless is already gone. Oh no. <laughs> oh yeah, he's, he's probably, he's probably got like 13 HP. Yeah, so this thing, this thing runs at Rampart and just, uh, it is, uh, oh, it's only medium, so it's actually not that big. Uh, but it, uh, it sinks its teeth into his armor and, uh, Rampart goes down. That's oh, that's uh, uh, I guess death saving throw, right? Yep. <laughs> yep. Rampart rolls a nat 20 and wakes up with one HP. I'm not <laughs> going to tell you what I rolled for suspense reasons. Oh, no. <laughs> it's okay, I got him. One of me has him anyway. Probably the one that took the class with him. Okay, Elix, you're up. <laughs> Your tank is down. What do you do? <laughs> wow. Uh, Actually, just rolling a crit right out of the gate. I told you guys. Uh, um, I'm going to move the opposite direction of the, of the, the beastie boy, the basilisk. Uh, but apparently I'm not going to move that far first. I'm going to attempt a Tasha's Caustic Brew at it. Okay. Uh, I'm going to just begin fun. doing hand, hand signals as the uh, the crystal around my neck kind of uh, begins to kind of glow and vibrate. And out of my crystalline hand kind of centered, it just shoots a, just acid straight at the uh, the beast. Uh, that's a dexterity saving throw. I just want to point out, I'm proud Elix uh, didn't immediately run away. Like, <laughs> like day one with the mimic. <laughs> He's like, T where are the teachers? <laughs> uh, the Basilisk fails at saving throw. Nice. All right, then I'm going to run 30 feet the other way. So, how much damage did I take? Um, you take it at the uh, beginning of your turn. Um, or until it uses well, a creature covered in acid it takes two d four acid damage at the start of each of its turns. It can spend. It can. It has to use its action in order to get the acid off. Gotcha. 
Okay, alkaline? Uh, Probably immune to acid, but eh. The one that was with Rampart uh, for his class is right next to him because he guidanced mm -hmm. him. Uh, yeah. He's going to... Um, he's going to pull out what looks like a... Uh, a, a vial and he pops it open and a red mist comes out and uh, you see it make its way towards um, Rampart's like trunk and then he breathes in the smoke and gains some life back as I cast Cure Wounds on him gaining 6 health I don't know why it rolls 2 die 8 when it, it shows that I'm rolling a 1 die 8 I, I know why, but I, I'll we can talk about it, fix it later. Or look yeah. at it later. And uh, Rampart's like, Oh, mother! Oh, um, uh, what happened? Did I... Oh, hello, Al uh, Rampart, uh, you quickly get back up. The basilisk uh, took you took you down in a single blow. We're still in a Bas fight. Basilisk? What bass? And he turns around and he's like, Oh, that basilisk! Quickly get up. Uh, I will stay with you, and I will, I will guard your rear. Uh, thank you. Uh, I can't believe I went down that easily, but uh, appreciate it. Um, so during that whole exchange, the other Alkalin was like, basically like miming the exact same actions as the other Alkalin, uh, but. Uh, didn't actually like pull any potion out. He just like made the same like movements as if he was like a like mirror image of the uh, first Alcanon. Destiny. Or did you want to move? Or you're good? No, I like I like I told uh, Rampart I was gonna stay with. Okay. Him. Protect his cheeks. Yeah. Well, cure wounds is also a touch spell, so I need to stay within touch range. I I have a shield. I got 16 AC. I'm okay. Good. Cool. Cool beans. I'm going to cast magic missile. <laughs> oh. Ouch. Twelve damage. Yeah, I'm gonna move thirty feet. <laughs> <laughs> Because I do not need to be that close. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, you weave these fiery, uh, they're like little mini pitchforks, uh, and you, you create these three little pitchforks out of fire and send them flying into the basilisk, and uh, they, uh, they you send them into like non-lethal locations, just kind of in the like center mass of his uh, leathery flesh. And uh, he... Uh, he uh, howls in pain. I'm sorry. Okay, Basilisk turn. Now I'm going to take some acid damage. Do die for. Do die for. Yikes. Might as well have been one die for. <laughs> no, in my luck, it would have been the one if it was one die for. And I am going to spend my action. Uh, he does like, uh, he like, he drops down prone and tries to like, uh, he's like rolling around on the ground, like trying to get the acid off of him. Uh, so that's going to be his turn. And now he's also prone. Nice. Get him, Rampart. Um, I will stand back up and uh, dust myself off and give him the good old Warhammer. When does the petrifying stuff kick in? Well, you said... Well, it's when you look at it. The creature starts its turn within 30 feet of the basilisk since we didn't see each other. I mean, you told everyone not to look at it, right? He did. I mean, yeah. A creature that isn't surprised can avert its eyes to avoid the saving throw. If it does so, it can't see the basilisk. Oh, right. Oops, I forgot how Basilisk worked. Man, I forgot how Mimics worked last time, too. <laughs> okay. Well, 
Okay, so... So I guess both you and Destiny need to make the save then, because you both looked at it. Okay, constitution saving throws. <laughs> oh, I can't, like, avert my gaze to just its mass and magic missile? Uh, well, it says a creature that isn't surprised can avert its eyes to avoid the saving throw. If it does, it can't see the basilisk until the start of its next turn. If it looks at the basilisk in the meantime, it must immediately make the save. Um, so in order to cast a spell, you have to look at the basilisk. Okay, you passed. Technically, Elix doesn't have to see it because he just, in the direction it's of his AOE. Face. Yeah, I guess that's also true. So you, you, you look at it and it's uh, there's something about its cold eyes that just kind of fills you with this sense of dread and uh, you manage to get your spell off without uh, any adverse effects. <laughs> uh, well, I guess I'm going to make a save for Rampart then because I'm definitely going to hit it. And a turn to stone. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I... Did feel my save. Uh -oh. uh, so, um, Rampart stands up, averting its eyes, averting his eyes while he's standing, and then he goes to raise his warhammer. And just as he looks at the basilisk, and he's got his warhammer ready to strike, and he, why can't I move? I want to smash this thing but I can't move my arms. I, I told you not to look at him. Uh, how am I supposed to fight it without looking at it? Uh, we weren't supposed to fight it. That's what I was saying. <laughs> okay, Yelix. Oh, it's, uh, my turn? Uh, um... Uh... I will, uh, um, what's it called? Avert my, uh, um, gaze because I don't want to look at it. And, um, I will try running behind it. Uh, I'll take the dash action to see if I can like get behind it. Yeah, I think so, if no. you dash, you can pretty much get behind it. Yeah, that works. Okay, that's your turn. Oh yes. Oh, you're just trying to like maintain concentration. Oh, but I used my uh, action to, to wipe it off. Yeah, no, I'm just trying to get in a position where I can look at it without it looking at me. As far as I know, would think. Okay, okay, Lynn. You can't help somebody with a saving throw, right? And I think guidance doesn't also affect saving throws. No, I don't believe so. Let's try to play some trickery then. Let's use my magical tinkering to infuse the scent of like fresh meat on uh, this rock I conveniently found on the ground. <laughs> so like loose cobblestone. <laughs> yeah, it's like the size of you know like a small brick. I pop open a vial of red liquid, pours on top of it, and you can see it just emitting this red mist that smells like meat. And without looking in the basilisks, without like looking at it, I'm like <laughs> trying to get its attention to see the brick and to get it to smell it. And I just toss it to the side uh, this way. Okay. Away from like where you guys are? Yeah. As an action, I can do, use my magical tinkering. So yeah, that will. Uh, 
I'm gonna stay behind Rampart. Uh, Destiny. Let's see. It's prone? Yes. Let's see. Ooh, problematic for spellcasters, huh? Not for magic <laughs> missile. I was gonna try vicious mockery. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, but I don't know if it's gonna understand me. Uh, mm. But I'll try anyways. All right, give us your best. Your top, your top hat's stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's a fake. <laughs> what's the What's the save I need to make? Wisdom. It's wisdom, yeah. to roll it yeah that's what i was trying to just needs to be able to hear you but not necessarily understand you oh okay your top hat's stupid i clicked save what did it there we go uh i failed my save four oh. psychic damage oh i really felt that one <laughs> It's most offended. Basilisk stands up. It's pride hurt. And it's going to attempt to run at Destiny. Oh, God. Uh, but it's only going to get here. At half speed. Just boom, 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 boom. Oh, yeah, true. Yeah. It's prone. So it so basically yeah. only gets around to the other side of uh, this other side of Rampart here, and uh, I'm Ramp sorry, I didn't mean it. <laughs> he's he's prowling around, uh, kind of looking in your direction. Now you're doing your best to keep your eyes eyesight off of him. Oh, you do have to look at him to says a creature you can see. So uh, go ahead and make your. Uh, Constitution save. Man, why does that have to be sight too? I don't Was know. she within thirty feet? Oh no 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 no! Yeah, you were further than thirty feet. Right. Thank you, Kyle. Never mind. Oh, then. okay. <laughs> Ranged OP. I've never Ranged run a basilisk OP. before, to be completely honest. Uh, so it's Rampart's turn. Well, it says I make the save at the end of my next turn, so I guess I'm still restrained this turn. Which kind of sucks. But I'll go ahead and try to well, save again. attack, it's just a disadvantage. You can attack if you're restrained? Oh, I'm yeah, thinking of paralyzed. Just... Okay. Oh, so well, in that case... He last turn, then. Yeah, I thought restrained was stunned. Whoops. Okay. First time DMing, guys, just so you all know. <laughs> <laughs> That's still so hard. East, East, Easter break really did a awkward reset. Yeah, my brain is just not firing on all cylinders today. I felt like that yesterday. I was like, we have D&D tomorrow, but it feels like it's been months since we played. I know. Yeah, for real. I don't even know why, what the difference was, but there was just something about Easter. Okay, I will swing and miss, and then I will repeat the save again. Hopefully I do not turn to stone. You got this, Ram? Oh, that wasn't supposed to be a disadvantage. Oh, it was the 12. We take the left one. Yep. Which means I pass. <laughs> Whoops. Uh, oh, I'm not much good in this fight, my friends. I hope that you're able to deal with it uh, without my assistance. Allie, Elix, you're up. Um, oh, that ends um, the effect, too. So I'm at least one turn. I'm going to move up just within range, which unfortunately the range for this cantrip is 30 feet. Um, so, uh, no, the range is 60 feet. Just kidding. Okay. Uh -huh. So I'm going to cast 
Um, mind sliver. Talk to the hand. Intelligent saving throw. Ooh, you're hitting all the rough saves for me. I rolled a zero. Nice. Ooh, <laughs> emotional damage. <laughs> you would love to see that. <laughs> Five psychic damage. damage. But, uh... And then I get a minus D4 to my next save. Yes. Yowza. Yes. All right, hey. Destiny, this is the combo kill. <laughs> Vicious Mockery Mind Sliver. <laughs> you guys are all about the psychic damage. Uh, but it is out Caitlyn's turn. I bet he wishes he had a ring of mind I shielding am. now. <laughs> keep, keep, her, keep Rampart between myself and the Basilisk. Um, keep on him, Rampart. I'll, uh, I'll heal you if you go down. Okay, sounds good. Um, Glorious combat. This is what we train for. Yeah, I'm gonna cast Guidance on him for whatever reason. Cool. I, I have nothing else to Thanks. use. Oh, yes, the no damaging cantrip life. Well, I have one damaging cantrip, but I don't want to look at it because I want to make sure that I can keep healing Rampart if he gets attacked. Uh, right. I got you. So I'm trying not to turn to stone. Guidance is only for ability checks, by the way, so. I'll have nothing better to do. It's just something to concentrate on. Sure. Destiny? Your monocle's stupid, too. I'm, like, I'm still, like, moving, like, <laughs> trying to 30 feet. <laughs> We're at that 35 foot mark running in circles around it. <laughs> but you also oh have to be out of range of it approaching you as well. <laughs> okay. I rolled an unnatural one, so you can uh, go ahead and Eesh. roll that. Is that including the minus 1d4? <laughs> That's not even including the minus 1d4, no. Let's put in a All negative right. one from. Alright, negative three. <laughs> oh! <laughs> How often oh, do you no. roll negative three in D&D? &D? Let's be real. So, uh, the Basilisk, uh, its feelings are quite hurt. Really been doing a number on its, uh, on its self-esteem and its psyche. And, uh, you, uh, you guys managed to, uh, keep it, uh, keep it at bay by, uh, keeping your distance. But, uh, the... Basilisk is going to lash out in anger uh, against your friendly Loxodon companion here. So oh he's no! Gonna, he's going to attempt to bite him once again. This time, he's going to roll Not a crit. the correct the correct amount of dice. Yeah, I realized I rolled with advantage that first time, and I whoops. I'm supposed to. Uh, but he's actually going to miss this time, and. Uh, uh, Rampart gets his shield up and uh, blocks the, the bite before it's able to connect. Take that, fiend. Fantastic block, Rampart. Now and now, me. I'm going to attempt to attack it once again. Constitution saving throw. I don't give a fuck. Oh, that was Natural bad. one. Oh my God. Whatever. I don't care. I'm attacking at disadvantage. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but that one's a crit. Let's go. <laughs> but I missed because right. I have to take the disadvantage. <laughs> so uh, he he attempts to swing again, but his the paralyzation is too strong. I can't hit him. Elix, it's up to you. <laughs> what? You got this. <laughs> I believe in you. Uh, the power of friendship, Elix. I, I'm going to mind sliver again. Would you mind slivering? Into these jorts. Intelligence and saving throw. I big failed that one too. Do <laughs> psychic damage. <laughs> We're gonna knock Man, him into depression. He's throwing our die sixes and die fours at this dude. He's like pawing at his. He's like pawing at his head. You can tell he's like, uh, 
it's like his his brain itches. He's We're trying to scratch it. him into depression. <laughs> <laughs> Give him one level of depression, two levels of depression. <laughs> Is that the same as exhaustion? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. Uh, okay, Lynn. Except when you reach the sixth level of like, depression, something different happens. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> Dodge. Well, to oh, like, gar like if he tries to bite Rampart, then I can intercede somehow. Uh, that's that just is, Wars. yeah, that is Star basically a fighting style in D and D. I think. Shoot. Okay. Yeah. What's the worst that could happen? Well, I don't want to ready a cure wounds because if Rampart turns to stone. I'm not at max HP, by the way. I mean. Yeah, I'll just go ahead and cure one. No, because I don't have. I've only got one more spell slot, so I need to save it for if he goes down instead. Oh, wait. I was supposed to save. Hold on. I was supposed to save at the end of my turn. God. That's so weird saving but twice it's on the same it's, turn. It's, 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 it says at the end of your next turn. Next turn, right? right? Okay. All right. All right. right. I'm not tripping. Cool. Right. <laughs> well, anyways. Whatever you want to do. Uh, I'll just take the dodge action, I guess. Hmm. Hmm. Destiny. Your breath stinks. Dang. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> oh. We're chipping um. away five damage around. <laughs> I failed my save. Take that one, Psychic. And, uh, Destiny, just as you say that, uh, you hear the sound of, um, what sounds like a clap of thunder, and, um, one of your professors, uh, Professor Sharpbeak, the, uh, the owl from, um, from Orientation, Boom, she apparates in a whirlwind of feathers and light, and uh, she appears and sends a blasting ray of light at the basilisk, which knocks it over onto its so side unconscious. And she <laughs> says, oh, my st gosh, students, are you all right? I I'm sorry, I couldn't have gotten here any faster. Is anyone injured? Rampart, Rampart needs to go to the medical wing. Okay. Um, can, can you take him? I, I need to stay here and deal with this. Uh, I can certainly try. Thank you. He's and the... ten, 10 points to high rollers for holding him off until I was able to get here. Thank you. Huzzah. Uh. Yeah. Oof. What a what a lunch. Rampart gets one more saving throw, right? <laughs> At this point. Uh, yes, to not turn to stone. He's gonna be too heavy if he turns to stone. Easy. It's too heavy now. Cast my save. <laughs> He's like, oh, don't worry, it was all in a day's work for a, a prince of Luxedonia. And then he like collapses into your arms. <laughs> Uh, uh, did you, uh, uh, Kaylin? Did you want to give him one of your things again? Yeah, I stepped out to pee. What happened? Did he get bit? Uh, the professor showed up and interceded. Uh, okay, yeah, I'll go ahead and cast cure wounds on uh, Rampart again. Same thing. I uh, and then a red mist comes out and it gets inhaled through his trunk. Uh, uh. I rolled max. Good damage. 
Oh, thank you, my friend. I'm feeling much better now. That was uh, quite a harrowing experience. I've not really seen uh, much combat. Uh, I've had plenty of training, but uh, oh, the real thing is it's quite alarming. Well, yeah, the right things, that's... Uh, are, I don't want to go to class. Pooped? I, I think I'm okay, and he uh, he stands up. Uh, you hear another student come running out of the hall, and he says, Sir Reginald, no! You were supposed to stay in my dorm room! What are you doing? <laughs> and the, prof the professor is like, This thing is your pet? And he's like, uh, Yeah, they... The, the handbook said we could have pets and he said and the teacher's like the handbook said you could have an owl or a dog not a basilisk and he's like I'm so sorry it's like 50 points from your group and you are reporting to detention immediately he's like, I'm so sorry and uh, the professor takes the uh, the student and the basilisk and uh, starts walking off towards uh, Witherbloom Oof. Anyways, uh, you guys have class, uh, don't you? But did you hear that, uh, Destiny? We're allowed pets. We can get a we can get a team dog. <laughs> <laughs> let's 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 head to the uh, let's take Rampart to the medical wing ward, uh, just in case to make sure. I mean, I can I can give him a medicine check. <sighs> I can look him over. Oh, I I appreciate your concern, but really, I'm I'm fine. I'm I'm quite uh, all right. Uh, I think I don't know. We're already late for class. We might as well go get a doctor's excuse. Well, I can't argue with that. Fair enough. Uh, okay, now. Anyone know where the hospital ward is? That's a good question. That is a good question. Uh, I don't well, know. Well, everything starts in the biblioflex, so I guess we can head there. Yes. Yeah. Well, technically, we should be able to find one of those bots around us. Like, yeah, like they should one. be able to tell us. Uh, good point. Just realized I haven't put the ward down. Hello? I hope so. Friendly little bot. They've got Hello! How can I be of service? Uh we're looking for a hospital ward. The hospital ward? Medical ward? I don't know. The nurse's office is on the north side of campus. And he uh Yes, can you take us? Of course, right this way. Tink 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 metallic walking noises uh so it's actually uh, gonna be this building right here i'll uh be walking with rampart so i can help keep him uh stable did i have to go back to the play actors guild or did i <laughs> was i all set for the day uh no you're actually you have the rest of the day to do whatever you'd like nice i'm gucci uh, yeah. So the uh, the campus guide uh, escorts you to the nurse's office. And uh, the uh, the nurse uh, appears to be a uh, dryad uh, woman. Looks like a uh, like a wither bloom, and. Um, you uh, you bring Rampart in. He's like, really, really, I, I do promise I'm fine. And she, uh, as soon as as soon as you bring him in, uh, she's like, is that? Have you been? What is a basilisk doing on campus? A student thought it'd be a good idea to bring it as a pet. Oh, these first years. Well, at least you guys seem to have some more sense than uh, that one did. Come on, put him on the table. Uh, I wouldn't go that far. This guy tried to fight it. <laughs> well, it's very brave of you, but very stupid. Now, hop up on the table. He's like, I, I promise I'm uh, fine. 
And she's like, no, you're probably, your internal organs are probably turning to stone right now, so you're going to need to stay here overnight. Um, I need to, uh, and she, uh, she pulls out a wand and starts kind of like doing like a scan over him. Uh, and she's like, I need to detect and see how much, uh, how much of his magic got into you. Um, appreciate, uh, you guys bringing him in and, uh, I'll, uh, you can, uh, get the, the guide will give you a, a hall pass or a, a, a okay. note for being late. Okay. All right. Uh, thank you. Right, no problem. I'll, uh, I'll come check up on you before, uh, after my, uh, shift tonight at the, at the tavern before I go back to the dorms. Uh, thank you, comrades. I appreciate all your hard work and support. And I'll uh, bring you my notes for the oh, arcane artifacts oh, yes. class. Of course, the uh, the guide like <laughs> like one of those old like printers is like ee, 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 like prints out a uh, <laughs> prints out a a note for each of you out of its chest. And he's just like, here you go. Uh, please uh, try not to miss any more of your class than absolutely necessary. Right. Yes. Yeah. Of course. Let's uh, go, I guess. Okaylin oh, one or Okaylin oh, two, whichever one's coming with me. Uh, that one, him, and then the other one's pointing at himself. <laughs> <laughs> I turn around and start walking. Rampart, you want me to get you anything? You want some water? Uh, I think I'm okay. I could use a book to read, though. I uh, have the feeling I'm going to be here a while, and I don't think this nurse is going to let me do any homework, so perhaps I could at least have something to keep me entertained. You want me to stop by your dorm room and I'll grab one of your books? Yes, that'd be wonderful. He, uh, right. he, gives, he gives you his key to his room. And, uh, and I get the room number from him, and I'm on my way to the boys' dormitory. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. Our, our long-term plan is finally going <laughs> yes. to fruition. It's, it's finally <laughs> happening. <laughs> she shows up, like, six hours later with the book he asked for. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. So... Destiny. It's the middle of the day, so the uh, or it's after lunch, so pretty much everybody has already made their way to uh, to class. So uh, dormitory is pretty abandoned at the moment, uh, save for just some of the like uh, automatons that are like cleaning up after lunch, and uh, you uh, you head up into the uh, to the boys' dorm room, and. Uh, as you're uh, as you're getting up there, there is someone waiting for you. Fortunately, it is not who you had hoped it would be. Huh? <laughs> Anyone will do. <laughs> it's the rich snobby boy. Oh, okay. Aren't there two of those? <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Well. Oh, sorry. I know which one. <laughs> that's that's the poor snobby boy. <laughs> sorry, I still have this one uncovered, don't I? Oopsie. Okay. Uh, but, uh, yeah, Grayson is, uh, he's standing outside his room with his arms crossed, and he, uh, he looks kind of confused when he sees you coming up. He's just like, uh, excuse me, little girl. I think you're lost. Oh, no. I'm just grabbing something from my partner's, uh, room. Your partner, eh? Not even a week on campus and you're already hooking up? Jealous? Oh, me? No, not at all. But, uh, while you're here, I can go ahead and, uh, been meaning to get in touch with, uh, your little group need to stay mm -hmm. away from my team members, okay? Xanther, Loren, Javanesh, they're, uh, 
They're all off limits, okay? They need to stay focused on their studies, not be fraternizing with other teams. Oh, Xanther and I are already seeing each other. Well, that ends today. <laughs> oh, Grace said, I'm not going to muddle with your team or anything like that. It's just, it's all friendly. Well, you may see it as friendly, but I'm dead serious. This is business to me, okay? If I don't get good grades, my team doesn't take first place, you're going to wish that that Basilisk ate you. Oh, you heard about the Basilisk? Yeah, that that was fun. But no, you did, I, there's nothing you need to worry about. If anything, I'm helping Xanther. Hmm. I'll be watching, okay? You... You watch your back. Had I had a thought, but I'm not gonna say it. <laughs> There's nothing you need to worry about. I promise. Mm. Mm. I know I might seem like I'm bad news, but I do take my study seriously. We'll see about that. And plus, Xanther and I are both looking to be Prismari, so him and I are gonna see a lot of each other. Hmm. I'll have to have a word with him. Make sure that he's focused on getting good grades and not uh, other things. He's doing his best. I think he's still finding who he is. Oh, trust me. I know. He's on my team, <laughs> after all. All right. All right. Well, I need to go grab a book for someone. Yes, yes. Run along. Jump into the bed of another one of your... Uh, compatriots. <laughs> Make sure you find time to relax. <laughs> oh, I'm relaxed. Cool as a cucumber. I'm actually surprised you don't have class. I'm surprised you don't have class. Uh, I had the play actor guild today. That's why. I've, uh, I had some extracurricular business to attend to as well. Oh, that's good. Well, I'll see you around. I promise I won't get Xanther into any trouble. Better stay far away from him. If you know what's good for you. That is not going to happen, but well, I'll, <laughs> I'll be seeing you. He, uh, he goes back into his room, closes the door. Curious man. <laughs> don't know why he was out in the hall. <laughs> and I will go to Rempart's room and look for a good book. So you uh, you get in with the uh, magical key card. I got them RFID uh, fancy, fancy uh, magic cards. And uh, yeah, you open it up and... Uh, this room is very well kept. It's got a tidy little bookshelf and uh, a variety of books that all sound dreadfully boring to you. <laughs> but uh, you flip through and find the the one that looks the most interesting. And uh, is there uh, anyone so with maybe a bookmark? Make an investigation check. Let's see. Investigation. Uh, you flip through the books, and there is actually one that has a cloth bookmark, and it's uh, pretty close to the front. He's only a couple, couple pages in. All right, I'll bring him this one. It's called A Song of Ice and Fire. Ooh. <laughs> interesting. The most interesting sounding book in this room. <laughs> yeah, the rest all sound like nonfiction, like historical, like... This one, this one actually sounds like a novel or like, uh, uh, fiction. And while I'm in the boys dormitory, I'm peeking around to see if any doors are open. <laughs> Make a perception check. <laughs> you just hear. <laughs> in one of the rooms. <laughs> it's the middle of the day. <laughs> 
people found much. <laughs> or you find something you didn't want to find. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you, uh, you walk down the hallway, and it seems everything is locked up pretty tight here. All uh, right. As you're, uh, as you're descending the staircase back to the, the ground level, um, you pass... Oh, I guess I could stay on this page. Uh, you pass by another student who is headed up there. Uh, this guy looks familiar, but you're not actually sure where you've seen him. Uh, he's been on campus somewhere, but, uh, this, uh, I believe he is a troll. He's got the big, the big tusk sticking out of his mouth. Uh, and he's, uh, got kind of greasy black hair and big, very, like, round, ugly, uh, glasses. And, uh, he, uh, kind of does a double take, and he was just like, What's the girl doing in the boys dormitory? <laughs> I'm just picking something up. No no cause for alarm. Yeah, he, uh, he cocks one of his eyebrows up and he's like, uh -huh. I've got somewhere to be, so and he just like continues. <laughs> just like awkwardly like walks away. Hmm. Wonder who that is. He needs a makeover. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe some speech therapy. <laughs> I'm sure that's hard with the tusk in that's his mouth. About to say he... <laughs> Hence the lisp. <laughs> so you uh you return to the uh infirmary and uh you uh you return and um uh, Rampart is actually asleep at the moment. Uh, the uh, the nurse hears you come in and she kind of like gestures to be quiet and she takes the book from you and, and puts it by his bedside. She uh, she kind of takes you over to the, the side of the room and she's just like he um, now that the adrenaline is worn off he's uh, starting to catch up with him so he, he just needs to rest he should be fine in a day or two Thank you. Take good care of him Thank you for bringing him here. You, uh, you guys made the right call, and uh, I'll be sure he gets the book when he wakes up. Thank you. All right, Destiny's gonna go somewhere, smoke, and loiter around until she finds somebody interesting. Smoke. <laughs> <laughs> smoke break. Well, <laughs> hanging out in the commons down here in front of the biblioplex is probably the best people watching, uh, spot. So, uh, you want to head oh. down that way you can probably uh have yourself a smoke and leisurely afternoon uh so yeah most people are in class right now there's a few upperclassmen that uh you know they have like off periods uh they have fewer classes usually as the as the years go on but uh you just you're just kind of hanging about you see um you see some people coming and going to the uh to the cafe over there and people heading into the the library and uh yeah you're just kind of just kind of vibing hanging hanging loose anything in particular you're looking for anyone that's hot <laughs> of course uh, i'm already in yeah. class sorry wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh go ahead and roll a perception check Fourteen. A lot of nerds. A lot of nerds. Uh, but you... You see an older girl. By older, I mean like upperclassmen, not uh, adult. Uh, but you see this uh, girl wearing silver quill robes and uh, she's got really interesting like w like silver almost white hair 
and uh, you see her heading uh, towards the uh, towards the cafe, towards the fire jolt, and she's um, uh, she's she's like passing through the commons area. Hey, you're gorgeous. You meeting with anyone? She kind of stops and she's like, "Oh, uh, well, uh, thank you." She like does like the hair thing. She's like, uh, "I'm just." on my way to work uh can i buy you a coffee i would love that come on in i uh i'll pour you a cup myself our first time seeing this place oh is it <laughs> oh yeah you're right um Sure is. Okay, you're welcome to go in now. What? So you enter into a very cozy little coffee bar, and uh, it's it's interesting. It's actually kind of shaped almost like a class, like one of those like auditorium classrooms. Uh, up here towards the uh, towards the back of the building, there's uh, like desks and stuff to to study as well as like tables for uh, people to just hang out. And it's pretty abandoned here, you know, late afternoon, not exactly. Everybody's kind of either at class or just not really uh, here for coffee. But um, but uh, the girl that you spoke to, um, she uh, she heads over this way and uh, is behind the bar. There is also another um, is she an elf? I can't actually remember what her she, she looks like a furbolg. Oh. oh no, she's a tiefling. Ooh, more tieflings. Oh, and... that makes more sense. Nice. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, so you, you come inside and just the, the smell of the coffee beans is just wafting through the air and it's just, it's really quite intoxicating. And, uh, the, the girl comes in and she's like, Hey boss, um, this is, uh, my new friend. What was your name again? My name's Destiny. This is Destiny. Uh, Destiny, I'm Mina Lee. This is uh, this is my boss, Alina. Nice to meet you both. And she's like, well, hello, sweetie. <laughs> Come on in, pour yourself a glass. First time and, being in here. Well, uh, if you're at uh, if you're at Strixhaven. You're probably gonna find your way in here a couple of times a week, uh, the, especially the upperclassmen. They're they're always needing a good shot of energy, and we got it here. And uh, Mina starts uh, she starts doing like the she gets like the espresso and like grinds the beans and does like the tamp and then puts it in the thing and starts like steaming the milk. She's doing like the whole the whole shebang, and uh, she uh, pours pours out a uh, cup of coffee for you and does like the the milk trick so it creates a little uh so she creates a um it's like a bird in the, like a like a uh, like a dove in the, in, with the milk in the top of the coffee hmm, are Is you like, hiring here uh yeah we could always use a part-timer this is mina talking now I think she's I like, might be interested. She, uh, she's like, yeah. I mean, uh, right now it's uh, just me and Alina that uh, work here, but um, you know that uh, would get, free me up some more time to work on my thesis. I'm, I'm graduating next year, so I really want to get a get a start on it. And I'm probably not going to have much time. Mm, that makes sense. I'm surprised more f first years don't come and try and get a spot 
Well, it's, as you can see, it's not exactly the most exciting work. Uh, it does get pretty busy in the mornings. A lot of people will come over first thing to uh, beat the beat the hustle and bustle of the cafeterias. It's a little bit a uh, quieter place, and some people like to study here too. We have uh, we have some private rooms, but uh, those are for second years and up only. Mm, I see. Well, do you have a spot for me maybe later in the day? I'll be honest, I'm not quite a morning person. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. We stay open till... Fire jolt stays open till 10 p.m. So uh, when you get out of class at 6, if you want to come by and work the late shift, uh, that, that could work. I would love to. Yeah, and uh, you're welcome to, if you need to bring your homework or anything, you know, just uh, no uh, no explosions inside, please. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. Can I paint here? Of course. Yeah, just uh, as, as long as you're uh, attending to the customers, uh, we'll teach you how to make the uh, different... Oh, you know uh, some kind of fire magic, right? I do. I have firebolt. Oh, perfect, because... Uh, You'll need that if you uh, want to make our signature drink. Ooh. It uh, takes a little uh, takes a little time to master, but uh, you seem like a pretty bright, bright gal, so I think you'll be able to get it. Should I start right now? I'm not. I don't have anything going on today. Uh, sure. Yeah, I can show you the ropes. Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. So uh, you guys spend the rest of the afternoon. Uh, she teaches you how to make uh, a variety of different things. Here, I can. I guess I can show you the menu now that we're back here. Oh, it's cute. <laughs> So there's a, a variety of caffeinated beverages, um, as well as some like uh, little like uh, sweets, like uh, you see, they got like cakes and jellies and stuff like that. So uh, the cakes and jelly stuff that uh, those all get made by the morning crew. So as long as you as long as you know how to make the tea and the coffee, uh, you'll be good, basically. So they show you how to make everything except the signature latte. So the signature fire jolt latte is a uh, the Alina's uh, creation that uh, requires a uh, pretty significant skill hey, to gold make. Pieces, Jesus! <laughs> that thing better keep me awake for days. It does That's something a whole pretty good. Two weeks worth of work. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. It does something that is worth the price, trust me. Uh, but they teach you how to make uh, everything else on the menu. Nice. Look at me, I got myself a job. Hey. All it takes is very attractive people. <laughs> <laughs> Just follow That's your lady boner. <laughs> She's like, oh, I can stay here all day. <laughs> Coffee, you say? All right. Well, I think that seems like a pretty good conclusion to our uh, our lovely Wednesday here at Strixhaven, right? That was we're on Wednesday. Well, technically, yes. we still have the after after lunch classes and then our our work shifts. Right. Um. But, uh, but those are mo mostly montaged, so it's yeah. Fine. I was gonna say nothing. Uh, nothing super impactful really happens in the uh, that we know about. Uh -oh. <laughs> that you know of. <laughs> well, Perhaps I had, next. I tomorrow. had something I wanted to do. Oh, okay. Um, during your work shift or during class? During the work shift, what was it that Rampart had gotten? Uh, when we ate, I think it was the breaded rest of chicken whiskey and mushroom sauce that one day yes. that i paid for everybody okay so at the end of my shift when yum tells me i can uh make food for myself i'm gonna ask him if i can also make uh this for my friend 
who was attacked by a basilisk today as, you know, like a get better soon gift. He, uh, he thinks for a moment and he's just like, you know what? Sure. We'll say we, uh, dropped this one. Cool. We, uh, he's also a member of my team and we defended some of the other students from the basilisk today. So he went down heroically and I, I just want to, you know, good gesture for, you know. Oh, so you were the ones that took care of that. Yes, there was some uh, there was some scuttlebutt at the the teachers' lounge today. Um, I heard that some brave students were fending off a monster right here in the middle of campus. You uh, you've made quite the name for yourselves. Uh, most of the professors are uh, pretty interested to see what your group is gonna do. Oh, our group's gonna gonna change the world. Not really, but we're, <laughs> we're gonna we're definitely gonna turn some heads in our years here. Well, uh, let's hope it's turning uh, turning heads for the better and not the worse. Uh, you don't want to end up like your classmate there who brought the basilisk into... brought it into the dorms in the first place. I just want to know how it got out. Well, those basilisks, they, uh... They need, they need space, you know? They can't be confined to a small room. It's, uh pretty sizable creature. I mean, most most wild animals, they need room to roam and hunt and live. Right, but surely somebody would have heard the destruction of it trying to break out of the room. It wouldn't have been a silent process. <sighs> you know, you might be right. Um, perhaps there's perhaps there's more to the story that uh, needs to be investigated, but uh, that's above my pay grade. <laughs> Uh, well, thank you for letting me make a, a meal for my friend. Uh, I'm also gonna make my food to go, and I'm gonna I'm gonna eat it with him. So of course, not alone tonight, completely. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, go right ahead. And then so I'll make our dishes in a to go, and then I'll go to the nurse's office with our food, and I can eat with him before he goes to bed and before I go to bed. Um. Elix, do you want to try to meet up with them too, or are you just gonna? I, um, yeah, probably. I'll probably check back after I finish my job. Um, but that's it. So, Elix, you you go to your job, and um, the odd Minotaur that talked to you yesterday, uh, you don't see him at all throughout your shift. You're uh, this time. You're kind of like checking around bookcases to see if you can figure out what he wanted or why he was being so weird but uh, he's nowhere to be seen today so you uh, you finish up your shift and uh, you head over to the nurse uh, Destiny did you did you want to go check on uh, Rampart as well? Uh, she doesn't <laughs> That's okay, no that's fine I just wanted to offer okay, so uh, so Elix, Alkalen you, you guys uh head over after your, your respective shifts are over and uh, Rampart is uh, awake but uh, still laid up in bed and uh, he sees you come in and he's like, oh, uh, my friends, hello, welcome, uh, please uh, pull up a chair. I hope you don't mind if I don't get up. Oh, no, they sitting down. Uh, I like look for the lunch trays that they would, you know, put food on so I can set his food down. Um, I remember you ordered this on our, our first day here when we were getting to know each other. Uh, my boss let me make you a meal, so I did my best to recreate it. Oh, that is so kind and generous. Uh, how thoughtful. I, I truly appreciate it. And uh, he starts digging in. He's like, no, uh, no disrespect to the nurse, but lunch was a bit light for me. Yeah, I figured it would just be, you know, hospital-style food. Cup of jello. <laughs> yeah. So I, uh, I even brought my food, too, so we could eat together and you wouldn't eat alone. And I start digging in, and I'm like, uh, sorry, Elix, I didn't know you were going to be here. Otherwise, I would have made you something, no, too. Don't uh, worry. I, I ate before uh, work. It's uh, all okay. right. Uh, well, you're welcome to try some of mine. I made the same thing I made uh, Rampart. 
uh, no, thank you. I'm a. I just came by to check. I'm gonna go ahead and head back to my dorm already. I just want to make sure everyone you are all right, uh, Rampart. Um, I'll leave you two to have dinner. Uh, see you tomorrow morning, I suppose. See you tomorrow. Get some rest and don't forget to do your homework. Oh that yes. Too. Speaking of homework, uh, here's the notes from the after <laughs> lunch session. And I'm out of there. Ah yes, thank you. While we uh, all just discuss the class, the session that the rest of the lesson that he missed. Yeah. All right, that seems like a pretty good note to end on. You guys, we fade to black as you two hang out, uh, nerding out about magic items, and uh, excited for the uh, the rest of your classes for the end of the week. Yeah. Well, alrighty, guys. Hope you had fun. Hope we learned something. And uh, for anyone watching at home, appreciate you joining us. If you enjoyed this as well, uh, you know, feel free to follow us on Twitch, throw us a like and subscribe on the YouTubes, leave us a comment, let us know what you think and who your favorite NPC was, who you want to see more of, who you want to see less of. Uh, bye. May the swords be with you. <laughs> Have a great day, everybody. Bye.